The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. and welcome to day seven. This is the seventh round of the 2022 Fall Chess Classic and we have something very exciting going on. My name is Jonathan Schrantz and I'm happy to be joined with Grandmaster Miro and we're gonna be taking a look at this game. And Miro, it's actually, it's kind of a tale of two different tournaments. Like in one tournament, we see a very, very close race. And in the other, we might see somebody running with it potentially yeah. today or tomorrow, you know? So it's a little uh, bit different. Uh, right, it's absolutely different. Once again, the previous round had no draws whatsoever in the B group. Yeah, right. and Alex Lenderman, he is inclined to run with the win, right? Absolutely. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get to know the standings so that people can kind of follow along with us. But in Group A, we actually have a tie for first place. We got Yu Yang Yi and Gregory Oparin. This is going to be kind of interesting to see what is going on with those two guys today. And then we got Vidit uh, Gujarati and Von Nguyen sitting at three and a half points, just a half point behind the leaders. Hans Niemann, Ilya Nizhnik, and Nijat Absov all have three points. They are still just a point behind. Anything really could happen in the next couple days here. Aram Akobion has two and a half. Nicholas Theodoro has two. And Surya Ganguly has one one and a half. Miro, could you please let us know what's going on in the B group? It's a little bit different. Yeah, it's a little bit different. It's a lot different, right? We have Lendemann on the clear first with one point distance from the second place. Uh, tied for the second is Raudnach Hadwani and Christopher Yu. Then he's cut bridge after his yesterday's win. It's, it was a very nice mm -hmm. game. So he finds himself on the fourth position. Gergely Kanter, Brendan Jacobson on 50%, three out of six. Christian well, improved his result a little bit. He's tied with Tigran Harujinyan, Shad Chandra on two, and Purman Mikelan still has only half a point. That is correct. And let's get to know our tournament with the tournament format. This is a tournament that features two 10 player round robins. You saw that, there, that there's an A group and there's a B group. The time control for today's event is 90 minutes for the first 40 moves. Then you get 30 minutes for the rest of the game. And all throughout, there is a 30 second increment. Miro, could you please let us know the schedule for the last couple of days? Uh, yeah, so, so last couple of days. Today's, day, today's round, as you could see, already has started. Tomorrow, no changes. 1 p.m. is the start of the round. And well, after three hours is the start of our show. And on the last day, the round will start a couple of hours earlier because in case of a tie, the playoff match will happen the same day, 5 p.m. Absolutely. And like always, we are here live on Twitch, on YouTube. We are reading all of your comments. We've got YouTube people. asking us, hey, what is that building that we were looking at in the intro to the show? You were able to see the Chase Park Plaza and our cameraman had walked all the way through the building uh, to give you kind of an idea of where these players are playing today. And if you do want to catch up with us on social media, use the hashtag Fall Chess Classic or watch all of the games live on uschesschamps.com. And like always, I just want to impress on everybody that all of the money that we are raising, whether you're watching ads on YouTube, whether you're giving bits, donations, uh, subscriptions on Twitch. It all goes to an amazing cause. It raises, for every $75 that we get, we're able to sponsor one child for an entire semester that otherwise might not be able to have a chess program in their school. Yeah. So it's a really cool thing where a kid that won't be getting it uh, actually might be able to get chess, uh, which is an awesome thing to do. But uh, with all that out of the way, we are now gonna jump in and check out our pairings today for the A group. In the A group, we have Aaron Hakobian going up against Grigory Oparin. Yu Yang Yi is going up against Nicholas Theodoro. Von Nguyen is going up against Surya Ganguly. Nijat Absov versus Ilya Nizhnik. And our game of the day is Hans Niemann versus Vidit Gujarati. Hans, of course, on six out of six perfect draws. Uh, Vidit has three and a half. So this is something that will have our attention. Uh, maybe one of these guys is able to uh, catch up with Yu Yang Yi on this leaderboard here. Um, all right, and they play quite an unorthodox position, which actually started as something really quiet. Mm -hmm. But now, for well, perhaps for the first time in this tournament, I can really say that, well, Hans's position is unbalanced. He's Once moved again, every it's, single pawn. It's like, yeah, I, I can't really... <laughs> he moved all of them. You know, I can't really say, okay, the evaluation is such, uh, optically, I would perhaps prefer black, but 
you know, for the first time. So remember for all the reason those... of king safety, or is it anything else? Yeah, in particular? like like the the strange the strange term overextension, right? Yeah. Because when you push them too hard and, and kind of don't have the pieces to back uh, the squares up, right? So light square bishop would be perfect yes. on g two. Yeah, but since the bishop on f two, black with his last move, bishop f three. Uh, well, perhaps asking white to move the pawn even further to then mm -hmm. all the light squares, all the this oh huge long diagonal will be open. And in these cases, I believe, I mean, it's not that important if white, say, wins the b7 pawn or so on. It's more about the king's safety. Absolutely. So that's, yeah. And how did this all happen? I mean, somehow, <laughs> what compelled Hans to move every single pawn? Uh, right. It actually started in a very say very civilized way <laughs> an imza indian e3 bishop d3 knight f3 and sure. that's uh, this all seems very normal mm, yeah knight g2 perhaps is somewhat more popular nowadays but knight knight f3 is of course this fundamental line that yeah people started to play 1930s and sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah continue to play it. till that it's day it's a good yeah. line for both sides yeah so cd5 apart from cd5 you can castle you can i guess go a3 pretty much any moment which forces the exchange on c3 but yeah cd5 ed5 immediately d takes c5 so this way uh black plays with an isolated pawn knight b to d7 and hans yeah and just, just goes bishop d2 mm -hmm. which seems to be like an Awkward development of this bishop on d2, but yeah, an isolated pawn still. Queen to b3, attacks the bishop, castles, and this is the moment where black, I believe, can, but I don't know if he should play d4. Okay. Because you kind of even all the structure, white takes twice, sure. black takes with the queen. Yeah, okay, we could quickly run through this one. Uh, so knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes, and bishop e3, and I guess black might have some slight difficulties like bishop e3, bishop f3 later on, so, so maybe some slight inconveniences for black. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, a6, still, like I'm checking the database, there are like big names, player played this position, a4, and yeah, a4 perhaps is the first kind of slightly independent move. There, there were games, but not on a very high level. Okay. So a4 simply stops b5, yeah? Knight to c5, queen a2, bishop e6. And this is perhaps not uh, the best option for black. Knight d4, bishop d6, rook f to d1, queen e7, and bishop to e1. White consolidated, the isolated pawn is still somewhat weak. Uh, bishop f3, potential move, right? If needed, white can trade on e6. And then Hans goes with f3, which is like perhaps a logical move in order to restrict those knight jumps, but mm -hmm. also you create yourself a target on e3, right? And this is where it started. So black went okay. bishop d7, bishop f2, queen e5, like tread after tread after tread, right? And the cell black is just slowly <laughs> provoking him to move every pawn in g3, front of the king, huh? queen to h5. Mm -hmm. And Hans never was was kind of never planning to stop. So b4 and <laughs> f4 and everything goes forward. Knight to g4 and here okay, machine was suggesting to take on g4 with the bishop, which is like an awkward move to make. Yeah. You just weaken all the light, light squares, squares right? Trade your bishop away. But on the other so hand, he moves his last pawn. On the other hand, he went h4, which yeah. optically looks <laughs> even worse. So bishop takes. Knight takes d5, knight to d4, rook to d4, bishop okay. to c5, rook d2, bishop e6, rook a to d1. And maybe that's the moment where, oh, rather that position Hans was pinning some hopes with because knight f6 is a threat and feels like mm. it's, it's somewhat awkward for black, but black found rook e8, sidestepping the, okay. all, all the tricks and perhaps indirectly putting some pressure on the e3 pawn. Hans ended up yeah, like when queen b1, queen to h6, ended up capturing uh, the knight, rook c1, and bishop f8. All right. And here we are, e4, bishop f3, and while we were <laughs> looking at all that, rook e1 and queen e6 were played. Uh, queen to h3 yeah, was a threat. Right. I just He's wanted to mention. He's sneaking in yeah. on these light squares. So pawn moves, mm, uh, Hans yeah. moves yet another pawn. <laughs> he just keeps yeah. pushing, and this time he has okay, to play f5. f5. F5, yeah, and maybe maybe it's not that easy out. to find not easy to find the square for this queen unless it's oh no, queen to e5. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I'm somewhat embarrassed because I, I wasn't sure where the queen goes after bishop d4. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's going to capture the pawn. Yeah. Okay. Okay. With this out of the way, yeah, we can see some potential threats, even like tactics like yeah. bishop 
Bishop c5 might work at some point. Wow. Yeah. All right. So, well, this yeah already looks like Hans maybe under a little bit of pressure here. We'll have to see what happens yep. in this game. Uh, but before that, let's jump into the B group and let's see what's going on with our B group standings. Uh, here the pairings for the yep. B group, group rather are Dennis Kadrich going up against Christian Carilla, Armin Mikalian going up against Brandon Jacobson, Gerd Guli Kantar going up against Christopher Yu, Aksha Chandra versus Tigran Hartunyan, and Alex Lenderman, our tournament leader by a full point, is going up against Ranak Sadwani. And this is also a big one because Ranak is in second place with four points. So a lot of stuff could happen here, but obviously Lenderman is off to a really hot start. And if he has a good position or somehow like gets a win today or something, he could start yeah. to just run away with this, even with a day or two left to go. What is going on in this game? Um, all right, so first things first, Lenderman is up a pawn. So he has won a pawn somewhere around e4. We could uh, nice. uh, go through the game. It's always uh, nice. At some point, yeah. But somehow, somehow this bishop came to life. Uh, it's It was... It was this one, one of those um, Carlsbad structure okay. positions where a black very often ends up with the bishop on itself. Okay, we, we probably should just go through the game, so, sure. so it'll be a little bit more clear what I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, how did this about. one start? Yeah, but it looked, it, what I'm trying to say that at some point, white well, it wasn't material up, but it looked very promising. Sure. Now, yeah, it's, I want to say, just the pawn. Okay, sure. There is okay. a pawn, so but maybe... still you need to convert it, and at least all the black pieces kind of came to life, right? So, uh, everything on the open files, open diagonals, so black perhaps is not that unhappy with this scenario. It did look worse at some point. Okay. So, it was another queen's gambit. We had quite a, quite a few of those. Knight to c3, knight b to d7, and yeah, and white decided to go for a Carlsbad variation here, kind of one move later. So c takes, e takes. That makes it so that white has the knight on f3, which is considered by some not the best setup in cars, but yeah, okay. a lot of people prefer, yeah, develop the bishop, go e3, bishop d3, and knight mm -hmm. g to e2, yeah, if, if the knight is still on g1. But at the same time, black already committed to knight d7, so, well, he doesn't have those lines with an early bishop f5. All right. All right, queen to c2, c6, bishop f4, not to g5, perhaps okay. doesn't make... That much sense. Knight h5. So he doesn't really uh, doesn't really want uh, White to keep the bishop on this on this diagonal, and he goes knight h5 immediately. Otherwise, White would have played h3 and mm -hmm. always would have bishop h2. Bishop yeah, bishop h2 to knight h5. So therefore, yeah, knight h5, bishop g5, just trades the bishops. Mm -hmm. E3, a5, and wait a second. After e3, you have a bunch a bunch mm -hmm. of high profile. Games like Hikaru played against Aronian, Rajab of Morosevich, Dequan against Ponomaryov back in 2011. So that's a, that's okay. a kind of well-established well line. So and people then, are still debating this one, huh? Yeah, yeah. And then A5, all of a sudden, on move 10, it's almost like a novelty. At least no games in okay. the database I'm using. A5, bishop E2. And the point for, uh, yeah, of course, you'd prefer bishop D3, but then black has knight to F4, mm -hmm. right? The E pawn is pinned with the queen. So that's why bishop to e2, somewhat more with development, castles, knight back to f6, yeah, castle, castles, back to f6, knight to d2, rook e8, bishop d3 with a loss of a tempo, but so be it, rook e1, and this is where the bishop starts, um, okay. yeah, it's journey to g6. <laughs> yeah, White I had mean, a lot of space, so I guess this is how we got yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, White. he wants, yeah, that, that's it's a very healthy idea, to go yeah. to g6 and trade the bishops, but... Uh, f4 is a uh, very principled and also very, very strong move. So mm -hmm. f4, uh, since knight e4 is not possible, right? Black does not have control over e4. White threatens to trap the yeah. bishop, perhaps, or at least he's always ready to meet bishop g6 with a flat. So h7, h6 happen. Now, perhaps g4 would have been... No, nah, no, nah, g4 was played. Okay. I'm just, I'm just wondering. You're trying to make f5 work or something yeah, in like order to trap with the bishop. Yeah, like start with f5 maybe. Start with f5 maybe, and then, you know, and then g4 mm -hmm. on the next move. But perhaps it's not. It's kind of easier said than done, right? Queen d6, d6 or something, or, or even like make a move, and if g4 just take it twice, also might be not that obvious uh, mm -hmm. what the evaluation is. Why because we need to make sure Black has some threats. This. Knight e3, knight to g5. Yeah. Fair enough. So Lendemann just goes with seizing more space. G4 
bishop g6, f5, mm -hmm. everything with the tempo. And yeah, and that's the bishop, which in our position is yeah. currently so on d5. We know it's going to get out somehow. <laughs> yeah, so well, now it's, it's kind of interesting. D5. We saw in the Hans game, Hans had moved all the pawns in front of the king, but it looked like in that game, he's kind of getting attacked. This one is much different. It looks yeah, like yeah. white moved them all, but it's kind of restricting all yeah, the black's play. Here, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, the, this f5 pawn does a lot of job, right? It prevents the knight from jumping to g6 or mm -hmm. e6. It also blocks the bishop on h7, and white has enough pieces to back those pawns up, right? Queen g3, bishop g8. Yeah, that, that, that's one pathetic bishop, I have to say, <laughs> like the bishop on g8. And then, yeah, black uh, perhaps had not a lot to do but to jump okay. to e4, knight d2, and then if you attempt to defend it with knight f6, I guess g5 comes quickly, mm -hmm. so therefore f6 was played. Knight to b6, knight to d5. Okay. Uh, that's what happened. Here, Lendemann captured, bishop takes, a3, rook d8, and king h2. Interesting. All right. So white so, is up a pawn here. Yeah, but once again, it's thinking? not that easy, right? I mean, so there are weaknesses on light squares. Mm -hmm. If you, I don't know what black does, let's pass for now. Okay. If you go e4, then yeah, okay, he drops the bishop back to f7, and then always has the threat of b6, so kind of both pawns are a little bit hanging yeah. here. It might be, you know, e4, e5 might be just the way to win immediately. Right. <laughs> as well. Yeah, like, like if, say, e5 works and then you're just crashing. But it has to be done with, yes. with caution. I mean, that, that, that's what I mean. All right. So All I right. won't so be surprised if White's <laughs> position is like close to winning, but sure, Black but got some counterplay. All right. So Lenderman will need to have a lot of care here. He is a pawn up for the moment, so we'll see what happens there. We have had our first result of the game in the Ilya Nizhnik game, so it might be worth yeah, taking yeah. a look at this game in its totality so to understand Abbas what of, happened. Abbas of and Nizhnik just made the draw in the Alapin Sicilian. So All right. Uh, yeah, let's see if it was just, you know, rich these move. these players will be at three and a half points now. Rich move 30, uh, agree a draw, or was it a real fight? All right, let's see. So knight f3, knight a3. Mm -hmm. uh, well, good old, good old knight a3 line. Yep, <laughs> with the one point being, check. Yeah, point being, like, pretty much whatever you do, except for what Blackhead did in the game, next move's going to be knight b5, threatening a fork. Mm -hmm. So a6, then it allows white to go knight c4. So I threaten another fork. <laughs> yep, knight e3, queen c6, bishop e2. So brought the mm -hmm. knight to e3, I don't know if for good or for bad. And c4, right, and now he threatens d5. And c takes, knight takes, queen to c7. Computer at some point was very happy with how it looked for black. b3, okay. b6, bishop f3, bishop b7. Yeah, and this is this is always the case with those uh, structures, and I had plenty of those. From mm -hmm. you can get from e4 from French defenses. Also, sometimes something similar happens from the closed openings. Uh, like the structure itself suggests that White has to play on the queen side. Like you have the majority yeah, and so on, right? But at the same time, you've developed this stupid bishop on b2 so he points at, the ki points at the king <laughs> yeah, and then you don't know where to go i mean yeah. so i would argue that actually say having the bishop on e3 and the knight on c3 would be better for, for white like, like okay. they're kind of more prepared for the for the queen, so queen side up. kind of queen side uh, advance right interesting and here it, it's kind of white is finds himself sort of in the middle it doesn't know where, where, where to go next so rook d8 bishop b7 because it's somewhat kind of over oversimplifying things, yeah. Knight f3, rook d8, knight e5, and black is just on time to trade all the rooks, go back to b7, and yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, we can see how things started to get traded off. Knight to e8, and yeah, once again, <laughs> optically looks like white is getting somewhere, but bishop f6, or sometimes just f6, bishop c5, and yep. black gets all the tempi back. We got it. We figured it out. Don't worry about it. Let's just repeat those. Yeah, ones. guys are guys are very very solid. That's a pretty professional way to end the game. All right. Uh, and yeah, we actually do have a request from the chat. They want to see <laughs> one of our tournament leaders, Oparin. Coming up. That's the one. That's the one. You so. ask and we deliver. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Okay, this looks fun. Mm hmm. So that's move twenty six. That beats some um, like really <laughs> strange looking yeah. structure. <laughs> this is cool. 
And if anything, I would predict like Ragozin defense of some sort. So black went bishop before, went c5, d c5, captured on c3. Okay. The only problem with this theory that the c7 pawn is still there. So how do you play c5 with the c7 oh, pawn? Yeah. Okay, how did we get here? Let's it was it was the scotch, in fact. It was the scotch. Okay, we've seen a couple of these. I'm talking, yeah, about uh, the scotch. Just the true scotch? Scotch game, yeah. Not not the single mold scotch, but the other scotch. So knight to f6, uh, trades e5, and this one is it's really confusing. Queen e7, queen e2, knight d5. Remember mm -hmm. we had h4 in one of the games, yep. like an early h4. Here another... C4, that's another uh, normal move. Yeah, C C4 was the, the main line for a very long time, like okay. Gary was playing C4. No, here it's knight d2. Ah, okay. Knight d2 always been somewhat mysterious to me because... Uh, Mm, it's not clear what white tries to, you know, to achieve mm -hmm. playing these moves or Rook to b8, as far as I remember, one of the replies, yeah, we have like Nepo, Karyakin, Wesley saw Vidit, okay. and so on and so on. So a lot of Ray Robson has played with white. Knight to f4, queen e3, knight to g6. Okay. So, so far the benefit of knight d2 is that black has his knight on g6 and not on b6. Uh, arguably, knight on g6 is much better placed. Okay, so we'll see <laughs> so, what happens. So, so there is, that yeah, that's we'll not clear. Why would you? Anyway, f4, queen to c5, and, and this is like the weird part. A weird part starts. Okay. Because yeah, like yeah, bishop e7, queens on c5 for whatever reason, knight b3, and then it keep, keeps mm -hmm. kind of being chased away. Black goes d5. Oh. <laughs> so, All right. Takes on d6, queen d6, castles long, castles short. F5, Queen E5. So he is all about those intermezzos up. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's really funny. You attack my queen. How yeah. many queen moves has Black yeah, made so far? A lot of what queen are we, moves. <laughs> what are so we, we on? had, wait a sec, we had uh, not so many. So Queen E7, and then later on it was uh, Queen to C5, it's two, and Queen to B4, it's three, and to D6, it's four, and it's five. And after bishop d3, queens were traded. Ah, no, bishop f6. Okay. Yeah, wait, yeah, never, wait never. Wait <laughs> never. <laughs> intermezzo. An intermezzo. Yeah. And that's perhaps the one that white actually missed originally. Because after bishop f6, it, it is very annoying. b2 is, yeah, it, it's mm -hmm. a huge threat. Trading on e5 Allows almost means like win. losing a pawn. Because the knight attacks both the bishop and the pawn. And also f5 pawn is taken. Mm -hmm. So he had no choice but to go bishop c3, after okay. which white uh, black trades, captures c3. So this is a nice little series for black. Yeah, that's an interesting moment because white could have tried to take on g6. Let's mm -hmm. say bishop has to go and take on, I believe, f7, not h7. Because taking on h7 means this pawn's going to be lost sooner or later, mm -hmm. g6, and takes. Yeah, but that would, uh, that would mean playing versus a pair of bishops. He decided not to. He captured back on c3, knight to e5, c5, bishop a6, knight e4, bishop c4, traded on c6, bishop a2, rook h to e1, and h5. All so right. black arguably has a better structure, even the passed pawn on the mm -hmm. a file, but white has control right, over it, both. Might get in there first. This is, yeah. Yeah, this is crazy. Okay. Would you say that anyone actually has an advantage here, mm -hmm. or is this most likely a draw? Once again, I mean, the, you know, the... Kind of the, the habit I'll ask of the hard questions yeah, like what's the, the assessment the, of this position? The, the habit of um, say analyzing this stuff with the computer suggests that yeah, I mean everything. The previous experience, everything is a, everything <laughs> is a draw. You just have to be yeah. Like whenever you see some exciting structure, that means that they, they'll right. That they means they're going to It's a rook end game. You'll yeah. be a pawn up and it'll yeah. be a dead draw, right? I mean for one of the sides. Yeah. So white, in order to have like something serious. He has to press over the seventh rank, but the bishop on a2 actually guards f7. So mm -hmm. you could try to go after c7 pawn, but then perhaps black will have some sort of counterplay. Uh, hence, he plays h5, so now no back rank threats mm -hmm. of any sort, and maybe start will start yeah. like lifting rooks to like b3 and b8. There's actually not that many squares on this b file now. I realize. <laughs> yeah, because black wouldn't mind, let's say, having. The rook on b2 and the other one on b8, right? And sure. all of a sudden That'd it looks, looks tremendous for black, but it's not that easy to achieve. Okay, we'll see. All right, so this is one of our tournament leaders, Gregory Oparin, so we'll definitely come back and keep an eye on this one. But uh, when we left the Hans Niemann game, Hans was just in a little bit of trouble. We weren't sure what was going to happen. He moved all the pawns in front of his king. We yep. weren't sure what's going on. Maybe we can take uh, another look at that game and see if there's been any progress.
Okay, okay, the bin moves. Uh, not sure if progress, right. So what I'm, what I can see is that it is quite low on time, eight minutes, but that's, yeah, that's move 36. So that's not, uh, not something too terrible. Um, mm -hmm. Oops, and now, misclicked, okay. sorry. So F5, Queen E5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we saw up to here. In knight B6, Bishop C5. Was it, was it overlooked? Yeah, is this an issue for Hans? Um, just, yeah, like, like how do you guard how do you guard G three? Mm. I presume capturing this guy is not a serious option. Yeah. Because check on. Okay, first of all, this one this looks also needs looks to be strong enough. About, this but looks strong enough. Yeah, but I let's suspect, look at Queen takes G three because if this is a winner. Yeah, I suspect that one, uh, Black just wins like this, like a check here. Uh, check here, king e3. Now black has to be a little bit accurate. I mean, rook takes e4, queen takes e4, and black's own queen is under attack. Mm -hmm. But like playing some move here, yeah, looks uh, like very queen close h3 for perhaps. Black is yeah, almost like landing something g nasty here. Queen h3, and then rook e4 is a threat. Bishop e4 is a oh threat. Uh, yeah. like the king on e3, I mean, what are we talking about? Yeah, so that seems to be very Ooh. dangerous. Seems to be very dangerous, and the only way to guard this pawn is actually to it's play a move two. with the king, like king h2 or, or king f1, and say <laughs> king h2. For king h2 seems like what you would want to be able to do. Yeah, and then, it looks like then you might even, be losing even material. Rook d8. Oh, wow. Okay. Even rook d8. <laughs> you, to, to, to play it simple, I mean, so yeah. the king is still in some danger. White's knight is a bit too far away, like knight d7, rook d7 just loses. Wow. Mm, this yeah. is, I guess, well, even stronger than like just taking the bishop and yeah, you could take the bishop. The on. Yeah, I could take the bishop. All take, these, take all the these e pawns start falling off. But then, but then, yeah, but then rook takes right, and then when we trade everything, a eight is ah, hanging. So okay. that's why I, I was in your rook move now. So, okay, it, it's, it's still not the end. I mean, yeah. funny enough, because I say queen f five, I'm threatening oh. to take this one with a check. If you Very trade nice. on e eight, even though white is a knight, oops. Even mm -hmm. though the white is a knight up, knight can't really return back. So even this mm -hmm. one looks like okay, but yeah. marginally playable. Sure, but black can obviously do better. <laughs> yeah, black probably will find a way to do better. Oh, okay. King h2 is on the board. Vidit is thinking. Okay, He's so got this was played. Minute. Interesting. Yeah. All right, so we'll get to see what Vidit actually plays here. Yeah, he hmm. could try. Could he now? But before, still not not an option. But there is a feeling something something's terribly wrong yeah. with white. Uh, hang on a second. If we want to win a pawn, why don't we just right. take on b6? Say something takes, bishop takes, right? And we take e4. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily about the pawn because, say, the b pawn, white can play a5, the pawn's blocked, it's never, sure. never going to move. But it's more about, once again, opening the diagonal and the king safety and f5 pawn, if anything. Yeah, just this danger of opening up your king so much. Yeah, so that's... Mm, that he might regret pushing those f and h pawns then. Hmm. I think you have been given some credit, at least by chat. They're saying your rook d8 move may actually be the best. We can come back and also take a look at that. <laughs> uh, I may have tricked really? you out of analyzing the best yeah. move. Uh, I'm assuming they're saying. talking about this position. They must be saying uh, rook a to d8. Yeah, I just need to go back and forth. Yeah, bishop. But he already captured. Yeah, rook, uh, okay. d8, rook d8. Maybe yeah. this was also very Once strong. again, like like from, from experience, you have like Using all, all, the guys, all the guys yeah. in the action, and then the, this fella on a8 does, does nothing. So, yeah. so rook d8 is, at least it's a move to consider, right? And once again, if I'd be playing the game, I cannot claim that, yeah, I'd play rook d8 instantaneously. Sure. But that's one There's, of the candidates, yeah. one of the strong candidate moves. Absolutely. But instead he took the knight. Yeah, Vidit decided for simple chess, just captured the All knight, right. uh, captured on b6. Uh, he can take e4 if, for whatever reason, he's not happy with. He can play rook c8 maybe sure. to, well, planning to say, lip the rook. And yeah, take both the, of those options look very yeah. good for black. Still, How much trouble would you say Hans is in here? Um, really depends if e4 is up for grabs, because <laughs> if you just take e4 and, and go away with it, it mm -hmm. might be like a couple of pawns deficit. So like losing? Yeah, like losing. Oh my gosh, this could be huge. Hans um, has had all draws so far, and this could potentially be his first loss. Yeah, well, anyway, Oof. very unpleasant position for sure. All right, so we're definitely coming back to this one. We'll see what's going on. Uh, is there any other games that we haven't checked out yet that maybe have your interest? 
Maybe the, the Christopher Yu game? That's uh, another important one for yeah, the standings. Absolutely. So back to the B tournament and let's check. So we agreed on Lendemann having a very promising position, right, against uh, mm -hmm. Ramak Sadwani. Yep, we have seen this one. And that means if he wins, he'll yeah. be two points clear of Ramak with two rounds to go. Yeah. And right. the closest rival with, will be Christopher, Christopher Yu. Yu. So this is very important. Christopher Yu needs to have a good day today. Yeah, but he doesn't have it. He doesn't oh, no. have it. That that's what. That's move thirty-eight or th yeah, move thirty-eight. And one of the reasons why this game is still in progress is that it's just so white important. is very low on time, like huh. one minute forty seconds. Okay. Other than that, it's an extra exchange for not much of a compensate. And what move are they on now? Because they get bonus time at move forty. Mm, move thirty-eight. And this is okay. Move thirty-eight. So, so, so a it's, couple of okay, moves we can more, stay here for a few and minutes. that'd be. All right, this one looks interesting. Yeah. How did we get here? It was, it was something really strange in the opening. So <laughs> once right. again, it's uh, the Nimta, but this time Queen C2, and that's one of the lines that Hikaru at some okay. point was playing a lot. Yeah, sure. Castles, and then E4. And E4... Okay, this is a sharp line. It's a very sharp line, or rather used to be the sharp line. And then he, they figured out that D5 mm -hmm. and... A lot of sharp theoretical moves, and you agree a draw because everything, everything it's all worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's worked out, uh, but every now and again, someone comes up with like a little idea. Mm -hmm. You can't really refute the line, but sure, like maybe. I mean, if you did not repeat everything with black, you come to the game, you see this position, and you understand. Oh, okay, D5. Now I will have to figure out. Mm -hmm. And around around move twenty five, white will have a few tries, and I have no clue which one he he picks sure. for this game. Yeah, and some so people he didn't just play d5. He yeah, plays some d6. people just play d6. All right. Yeah, and you do have games here, like Magnus uh, had this position with okay. white. There was a Fabiano game with black against Mami Diarov. So it's okay. not it's not as This is some idea. Yeah, white goes with e5, knight to d7, he takes he takes knight f3, knight to c6, bishop d3 targeting this uh, this dude. And then, yeah, in this position we have only one game in the database. It's Vallejo against Abdul Satorov. Okay. Back when Vallejo was a huge ELO favorite. And I assume H6 so, like, was like, played? What else uh, would you even think about? Yeah, certainly not. Yeah, H6 was played. Certainly not the move that was played in our game. He let... What did he do? E5. So this pawn is hanging with a check. Wow. You probably don't take immediately because then D4 is hanging and G6 is a trap, mm -hmm. right? And he didn't do this. Instead, he went with d5. What could be okay? Sure. <laughs> what could be easier than that? D5, d5, bishop to g5 first. Okay. And now I reckon f6, white would take. Mm -hmm. And then too There's many. There's no g6 to trap yeah, the bishop. Yeah, kind of too many light square weaknesses. Also, there might be some knight h4 with knight g6 nasty yeah. threats. Yeah, this is all very nice. Not rushing to take the h pawn, but coming up with a few improving moves yeah, before you get there. It's, it's all nice. about, you see, I mean, intermediate move is, I believe, underrated. It's a very important skill. Underrated this is like the tool. biggest takeaway of this tournament is find all those intermediate moves. Yeah, so bishop g5, queen e8. Now the pawn is captured, queen e4, and now white oh boy. actually does something very straightforward. Go to h4, Absolutely. move the bishop, queen h7, checkmate. So black was forced to go knight f6. Bishop takes pawn takes, and this looks <laughs> this looks like a disaster for yeah. Black. So I'm actually surprised that at some point his position looked almost normal. What's kind of funny about this structure, he had it like yesterday, right? In the Sicilian, Black I, had this position, yeah. but the king got all the way to e7 where it was totally safe. King it doesn't look e7? as safe on h8. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, he did escape from the corner, but uh, yeah, at the cost. Okay. Uh, queen h4, king g7 has to be played, bishop to e4, mm -hmm. uh, once again a threat of checkmate in one, rook h8, queen uh, okay. check, queen Black g4. Really, if you can get those queens off, you won't get checkmated immediately. Yep, so c5, bishop d5, finally white trades, All right. and goes h3. All right. So now I presume bishop f3, it is just bishop f3 and rook to d7. Maybe after rook c8, you actually throw in c6 so that be, yeah. black can't really take with, uh, with the rook, has to capture with the knight and rook to d7, bishop to d5 back. I don't know how bad does it look. Uh, instead, bishop f5 was played, but this allows white to continue okay. pushing these pawns h4 and c4 and it, like everything goes up the board 
H6, G5, I mean, oh boy, really breaking through. Wow, this is very nice. Absolutely. E4, knight to D2, rook takes, knight E4, rook D5. <laughs> well, got yeah. engaged into some tactical tricks. Sure. Rook takes, a check, king D2. All right, all the knights are hanging. And yeah, and Everybody's it turns out hanging. if you are planning to take with the bishop and it's kind of a, you know, double attack, H7 wins, oh. and maybe many things win perhaps. Like, up to the point that you can actually, <laughs> maybe you, can you can actually take, take and, and please take one of please. the rooks, H7, please. H7 is yeah. gonna, yeah, I mean, this is Very ironic nice. because it's, it's, it's also a checkmate of the <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Uh, right, so he ended up capturing the knight with the rook, white captures an a5, check, king e3, check, okay, some checks, okay. Uh, but as soon as they've, yeah, they've just reached move 40, captures, king g8, rook a7, bishop e4. Okay. All right, so the king will be kind of, say, fish on h7 for some time. You had a little hesitation there. I mean, is black just in too much trouble here, do you think? No, I think he, he, he's just lost. I mean, that, yeah. that, that's the point. I'm, I'm just, the station was like, uh, how do we win as white, like in, in the shortest way? Yeah. So, but you probably don't need, like, look for the shortest way. You just give a check, I guess, give a check. If king h7 go to g7, just okay. pick the you pawn. Have, we have to be a little careful taking that pawn. Bishop d5, yeah, uh, fair enough. So. But maybe maybe I, maybe, I change, the, maybe I change my mind. Yeah? <laughs> maybe I change my mind. Maybe maybe I just yeah. go back. If you can get him stuck on the H file, maybe bad things will happen. Yeah, Rook H4. This looks is tough news for Christopher. Christopher, one of the the people that could potentially catch up to Alex Lenderman. If he's yeah. losing and Alex is, I mean, at least drawing, maybe winning. I mean, Alex Lenderman, he's going to be running away with the B section. Yep. Wow, all right, so we'll come back and see if Christopher somehow can hold on to this one. But uh, I think also we have some big news in the Chirilla game. That one might be worth uh, taking Chirilla a peek at. Chirilla game, uh, so Chirilla He's Black going up with, against Dennis Kodrich today. Uh, Black with Kodrich, and Kodrich's performance in this tournament was quite <laughs> quite <laughs> impressive. Yeah, we love the like, beginning, yeah. Wins in a, in a brilliant fashion or loses yeah. <laughs> disastrously. So let's... That's perfect uh, for the spectators. Yeah, That's exactly what you can hope for. <laughs> let's find out what... Uh, Christian's tournament started a little slow, but it's been getting better. Yeah. And just kind of taking a quick look. I don't know. This might be really good for him. Yeah, so last few moves. I mean, pro probably like... like Since we are getting to time troubles, there might be not enough time to look at every game mm -hmm. right from the start. But kind of the dynamics in last few moves were... Yeah, white's up a pawn, but black has better king for the end game, right? The d5 pawn's weak, and uh, the c pawn, the past c pawn, which will materialize on the board, will be quite uh, quite unpleasant for black, uh, for white to handle. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and that that's a little bit sad for white. He has to play before in order to have some bishop c5 ideas, mm -hmm. but that means that c4 pawn is it's a here pawn here forever. to stay. Yeah, rook to f4. Rook to f4. Yep, not clear. What would you? What would you actually do? So, well, maybe try for a say for a rook hand game. Just return the pawn. Go say king f3. But still, right? The d5 is weak. Yeah. 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 I think we like Christian's chances here. Yeah. I think we like Christian's chances. Move 33, just to keep you just, informed. And just for a laugh, if we play h3, what would... Uh, uh, yeah. Does, does Black have H3, a good idea here? I guess he just Did you begin pushing immediately? Just pushes, huh? targets this guy. Yeah, there is a check, I understand, but then once again, yeah, everything lines up yeah. very nicely. C2, C2 rook, rook, yeah, rook behind the pass pawn, bishop b2 or f4, and we win material with right. so. That's why you were kind of eager to maybe give a pawn back. Just yeah, that's why. Try so white actually easier. went with bishop takes a7 instead of h3. Mm -hmm. And okay, I keep wondering move. if black has to take the pawn or maybe still can go c3. He doesn't c3. want to push it. Yeah. So this is a big sacrifice, right? Because he's winning, or he's not. Yeah, c3. He's winning a bishop. And point being, I, I'm planning still to capture this one with a check, but I want the c4 square for the rook when the rook is attacked, right? And on so, bishop b8? Uh, ah, bishop b8, pardon me. That, that That's a... Something to, to, watch, okay. to watch out for, yeah. Didn't know Good point. Had, I didn't know if you had a brilliant, you were just <laughs> sacking a bishop, Good going point. nuts, just promoting a Absolutely, I, I went like crazy. Okay, so then check perhaps, mm -hmm. but then it's, yeah, then it's not that straightforward. Check, 
not sure where the king goes, like h3, not pleasant, f3 allows me one more, but maybe this one more check is nothing. Mm -hmm. So what I mean, uh, so black probably has to end up, yeah, has to end up with the rook on mm -hmm. g8. And then perhaps, yeah, then perhaps chances all of a sudden, yeah, king e4 even, hmm. yeah, anybody's game then. Huh. We went from thinking Christian has a great position to, I don't know, maybe Kodrick's going to figure something out. So this one's a little wild. It's very imbalanced, and we'll see. We'll let the players figure it out, and we'll get back to you uh, with yeah, some updates. Should be a... Speaking of updates, I think there's been something happening Hans, in the Hans game. Hans, Hans, Hans. All right. And where... So when we left it, Hans was in a little are... bit of trouble. We were kind of getting worried for him. Maybe this where is going to be queens? his first loss. First question, where are the queens? Bishop e4, rook d e2. And that's something that uh -huh. perhaps we just overlooked when, uh, okay. when went for capturing Black, ah, the knight. Yeah, because it looks like Black was just winning a pawn. Yeah. But maybe he's <laughs> I mean, sneakily he, traded everything off. Technically, he is up a pawn, right? Sure. But that, that's the same pawn that we kept off sure. the pawn on b7, which doesn't really matter if White just goes uh, a5. Uh, yeah. and yeah, All of a sudden, this looks way more holdable than when we yeah, had Absolutely. It. Maybe is he, I don't know, I wonder if he's just Abs gotten out of all the trouble. Absolutely. I mean, perhaps, yeah, like Black really, really needs to like come up with a couple of good moves to at least mm -hmm. give theoretical chances because I right. believe like if you allow White, the next move is going to be H5 specifically to kind of, because what I want is to build H5, G4 structure kind of. Mm -hmm. So any time Black starts pushing the pawns, I'm just trading everything. As the, the yeah, more, Black won't be able to make any yeah, the more there. we trade, the less we blunder. That that's how, <laughs> how, how, how I was thought. Yeah, and the plan on the queen side is just to go a five and let it be. All right. Yeah, very good chance. I mean, it looks like Hans has gotten out of any. If he wasn't any trouble, it looks like he's not anymore. As far as as white, you can even trade rooks, maybe. <laughs> you can like, yeah, like a five. Just be like G4, I got opposite color bishops, and we are, we are ready to trade the rooks. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So that seventh draw coming up. All right. So maybe in this one, though, maybe he's kind of a little bit more fortunate to get him. Some of them have been <laughs> yeah, well, in a some little bit different than this. He was like this, almost so. winning. All right. Uh, so here. we'll come back here if there's anything that uh, changes, but maybe there's some other games we haven't yeah, touched let, on. Yeah, let's just quickly get, uh, do a run through. So this is one win against uh, Surya Ganguly. Mm -hmm. White's up upon, but. Uh, Opposite colored bishops once again looks like almost a fortress. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe, maybe, strangely enough, oddly enough, uh, the winning chance for white would be to actually trade the rooks. Like get the king to g6 mm. and then yeah, somewhere you trade the rooks great. and black might have difficulties defending defending the g6. Uh, and this G7 one is going to be huge because uh, Von Nguyen is only a half point behind the leaders. So this actually, yeah. for the standings, this could and have And the A tournament is not moving that quickly, right? Correct. Right. Yeah, mean, a lot more draws. <laughs> it's a lot more draw heavy than the B section. So yeah. every single extra half point that you get really goes uh, a long way in this one. Absolutely. Then, uh, whoa, Yu Yang Yi is actually mm. under attack against All right. the Adora. with four points. Uh, yes. Uh, have we seen? No, no, we, we hadn't checked this one. Yeah, this so one we should was, definitely check out. Yeah, yeah. From the ah. very start. So that was... Uh, yeah, it looks like a Sveshnikov. Sveshnikov with knight to d5, which leads to more of like knight of fish structures. Mm. Yeah, and that was battle tested in... The World Championship, right? Yeah, in the World Magnus Championship match. Yes, and Magnus has played it in classical games and also I think he won one of the one of the playoff rapid games with this line. Uh, okay. So yeah. A5 and that's something that's something not seen very often, I guess. I'm I'm just trying to understand when they deviated from Caruana Carson. Ah, Bishop D2. Bishop D2 is something you yes, yeah, so that Fabi was playing perhaps Bishop E2. Bishop D2 for whatever reason is like a clever, clever move. A6, C4, Bishop E2. All right. Mm, but still, it's very knight of fish once again. Mm -hmm. Imagine the knight of a white somewhere went knight d5, black captured, white took with the e pawn. And then white tries to push these guys as much as possible. Black has does his thing on the king side. Do you have any preference for either side in these kinds of structures or anything? Um, I think it's probably up to personal preference. Yeah, so I always felt like black has higher rate success. Just because you're attacking, you're more likely yeah, to land a checkmate. But same logic uh, with you know with the old 
lines of Keynesian when mm -hmm. everything's blocked and you push sure. the C A B pawns and Black pushes the F G H pawns hmm. because the you know the object of your attack is a little bit more viable, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. I wanted to say material. In, in fact, it's, so it, it's, it yeah, seems it's a lot more likely the opponent might make a mistake if you put yeah, him under some pressure. Yeah, well, can't calculate I make a mistake, I lose easily. one extra pawn on the queen side. <laughs> you make a mistake, part of the game ends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, right, bishop to d8, and in this weird way, he, at the same time, keeps the knight on e5 protected by mm -hmm. a piece, so he doesn't want to take with the d-pawn, obviously. And, yeah, and also the bishop was attacking the a5 pawn. Queen to d4, bishop back to f6, so this way black perhaps wins a tempo. c5, g5, this is where it starts. Like sides pushing uh, the pawns at each other. f4, bishop f5, yeah. Once again, we split the board in half. Queen side, uh, we look at the queen side, white's mm -hmm. overwhelmingly killing winning, He's and then the same for the king <laughs> side and black. Like black <laughs> has saying, a, Let's not look at the king side. Though. Huge attack, yeah. Black has a huge yeah. attack. So f7, uh, d7, sorry, f3. Yeah. Bishop yeah. takes, rook takes, rook to b7, queen h6. Well, it might be that, I don't know, Theodore black. just plays a brilliant game of chess. Oh, rook man. to b6. I'd be so scared. And he's also, like, almost asking... Please take, take, take my bishop, take please. This pawn on f3 is so irritating, right? No. <laughs> the yeah. answer is no. Uh, f6 pawn so strong. So it takes on f6, g takes, pawn takes, bishop f3, okay. uh, and queen to h4. So the plan, as far as I get it, is to play rook h6. Rook e1, yeah, but the king, if anything, can try, can okay. potentially try to run away. We'll see. Rook e1. That's the yeah. That's the position. Uh, that's the black is has white gotten out of trouble here? It's it's very close. It feels like it's kind of on the edge. Yeah, that's a it's a crazy game. I mean, it can be anybody's game because if white saves the king, he's still like two pawns up. Even yeah. if he loses h two, he's one pawn up, and black's king is also not very safe. Let's yeah. put it. Uh, yeah, so it is like yeah, so crazy one of those game. positions when you you really require to calculate on every single move, and not so much time left. Not yeah, so much both, like, yeah, both players running a little bit low on time. Yu Yang Yi, tournament leader, in kind of a very tricky, interesting position. Like, I'm not uh, saying yeah. tricky in the, like, uh, yeah. you're going to lose way. It's just, it's a very complicated position. All right, so he, he gave a check in G7 and might as well consider, like, going voluntarily mm -hmm. to F1, yeah, E2, and maybe, and maybe idea. all the way all into the long go. castle position. <laughs> right, but very exciting stuff. All very right, so we'll definitely have to indeed. come back to this one. This one is very important e, for the tournament. Yeah, and I remember people were requesting a Parin's game, so okay. here it is, but it's... Um, okay, we got some changes. Yeah, it's getting kind of sort of peters out, and I guess if anyone, it's it's uh, White who's, who's pushing. So White's currently to move, can seemingly just take the H5 pawn. Be up a pawn. I mean, uh, yeah, sure. Maybe. What's just up a pawn? Rook c5, king to d2, let's say. Or, uh, yeah, there is no discovered. So we've had a lot of these positions, but it's always been with opposite colored bishops. Here we see it's two light squared bishops. Does yeah. that give anybody better chances of winning? Uh, right. I believe white is a better chance. Uh, uh, is mm -hmm. like trying to win this, and the, the let's say the. Dominant factor would be if he's able to consolidate. So give, mm -hmm. give White a couple of moves, he plays bishop f3, then a kills h4, the and yeah, forward. yeah, like everything's solid, he is up a pawn. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but maybe Black has a bishop e4, and you know he doesn't. Today is the day I'm blundering the bishops, right? <laughs> ah. But also this bishop's hanging in the end. Ah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So whatever, yeah, exactly as I said, I mean, White wouldn't mind stabilizing, but, but <laughs> he's nowhere near to... Mm -hmm. He's nowhere near to, so it's still, even though it's the end game with just a couple pieces left, they just, you know. Okay, so things could still happen here. Being uh, a pawn down speaks for itself, exactly. <laughs> Which, uh, or rather, YouTube chat has it, yeah. And if we could actually just pop back to the Hans game, I've heard in chat too, they said your move, that rook a to d8, I believe was on move 38 or so. Uh, um, instead of bishop captures, maybe was yeah, rook the a to d8. Idea. Yeah, rook a to d8 and so let's, this is what was yeah, potentially let's venture, missed yeah, minus 2.3, yeah, he actually missed it. Okay, and why 
I guess you popped the computer open. We can just spoil what the computer was said because we yeah, didn't get so here. Yeah, rook takes, rook takes, and yeah. Apparently, if this happens, white has difficulties kind of defending the mm -hmm. king, and at the same time, the knights always like knights hanging in the air cannot return to the game. So, uh -huh. can you give me a couple more stockfish moves here. Here it's minus nine. The okay. best move is queen, queen okay. here. Yeah, just defend the second rank. All and right. by Go the ahead, way, maybe. by the way, what it's is? like. Yeah, h6 is good, something else okay. is good, but the actual strongest move is yeah. not really the first move you'd su suggest as the human. Mm, so you attack boy. the d2. Oh, right? it, that's really good. You attack oh, the d2. Oh, that's so good. The, and why to a5? Because you also keep an eye on oh, these stupid my. horses. So the queen oh, goes so and then, yeah, then take the horse. All right, knight c4. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not done yet. Nah, you won. Yeah, you won rook. <laughs> oh, no. So like everything, if everything wow, is what I mean, that, okay. That, is, so that was not easy. It's to not see necessarily at all. that White has to go this route. Yeah. He has some knight c4. He's still fighting, but Black yeah. was like oh, minus wow. two. Okay, you just so a huge chance. But what really happened in the game? Do we have any updates? Uh, yeah, rook to d5, bishop e4, and Hans went for this. Uh, he did actually swap which, the rooks. To okay. be perfectly honest, I'm not a big fan of because it gives another pawn. It gives uh, Black another pawn. I know. You're really saying you're going to hold this one. Look. Uh, so, wow. first of all, b5 is something to consider. Mm -hmm. So, a trade here. Sure. And you need to guard f5, dude, right? Yeah, I guard g4, it. G4, no problem. And then h5 happens. Mm -hmm. So, now capturing. You should move your king up as well. It's like two, idea. yeah, two, you know, two, two past pawns, and that's exactly what black needs. Uh -huh. Takes, takes, then black runs forward. Yeah, I better use my bishop. Yep runs forward mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure if it's a draw because this one is constantly targeted. Mm -hmm. And this one's constantly maybe targeted. Can run all yeah, the way. I mean if you can run all the way, yeah, white of course has this idea of con to play with mm. uh, so what I'm saying it's tricky. Okay. So you better have figured all this out. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not sure he did. I'm okay. not sure he did. And moreover here Okay, so turns this out, is still our analysis. Yeah, it turns out that you're not forced to take. You can actually force white to take on h5, like by going here. And yeah, computer is not sure. I mean, now I'm actually, sure. do you, I do use an engine, and, and still computer is not sure what it is. Huh. Like bishop here, some, some ideas with bishop d1 maybe. So it's not yet. So if Stockfish can't figure it out, then I guess we don't. Yeah, can't really not, say for certain. But not it is yet crazy though to go into this unless you're also, very certain. There is also one more idea: it yeah. is to take over mm -hmm. here a5. Mm -hmm. I presume White wants to stop it, but yeah. then in some position, I mean, first you of course uh, improve I see. the game. Okay. I see in where some you're position, going. you'll even go b5 takes and then have the bishop here, let's say stopping, and then the a5 pawn yeah. is going to move. Uh -huh. So even this might be a chance. Okay, of course not b5 immediately, but right. what you I'm saying, yeah, perhaps the bishop still keeps the chances and then work up to perhaps that. Still keep chances, but maybe not. Uh, maybe All Hans right. knows for sure. Once again, I'd be. I'd be scared to go for this. <laughs> Indeed. And what's even kind of what I find remarkable there, it was move 41 when he played rook b8. So he had taken full time. Oh, so maybe he did think about it. I mean, he must think he can hold it. Maybe, then. but he still has like 56 minutes. I mean, because so maybe, maybe he had like a really a lot, a lot, and maybe the position is not that hard, so he figured it out. But yeah. what I'm saying, having an hour on the clock, I would probably. Would have, would have taken more time yeah, to make absolutely. this decision. I mean, yeah, it's obviously huge. And you're either, you're either drawing now, you're in the draw zone, or you've completely thrown the mm -hmm. game away. So, mm -hmm. yeah, very interesting. So we're going to definitely be coming back to this one, seeing if yeah. Hans Niemann can somehow hold it. This is going to be a huge one for the standings as well. Okay. What else do we have? Uh, what else do we have? No results just yet, right? Okay. Uh, let's quickly click through the games and figure out if they all pass the time control. That's move 37 for Oparin. Actually, okay. <laughs> I was it, making it, those moves at random, wait, 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 that's, wait, a current, wait. that's a current position on it. the board. They did it. That's a current position on the board. So it's a rook end game with a uh -huh. pawn we are talking about. And still, I'm not convinced black will easily save this one. If white is trying to win, does white actually want to swap the bishops? I would have thought maybe uh, you want to keep bishops he, on the board. Yeah, like I, uh, ideally you probably do want to keep the bishops, but that's a, that's a very good bishop, right? And mm -hmm. g2 pawn is targeted. So your your options are pretty much bishop f3 or take on yeah. e4, and out of those two, you okay. you do take on e4, right? So, in other words, a good defense by black, perhaps. 
yeah, so something like that, and then yeah, once again, okay. even h4 g5 takes takes g4 is a funny is mm -hmm. a funny setup because next move is c4 mm -hmm. and the king, king somehow is king somehow useless. Got useless, out, huh? yeah. It cannot cannot really attack the rook. Oh, yeah. So imagine white goes c4 and then runs with the king towards this pawn. So that looks it very can be just automatically winning. Ah. So like really, really tricky. Huh. And that's move 37. Operin is still thinking he okay. is in huge trouble. All right, definitely. Uh, okay, Yu Yang Yi. Oh well, that that's one crazy position, but it okay, seems yeah, this to yeah seems that uh, White has it under control. So a check and Queen E three was played. So mm -hmm. he himself wouldn't mind checkmating the Black King. A check here, King of Pawn, Rook G six. Okay, creating so a square for the e, King, I guess. Yes, a pl planning to run to H six and Bishop E four. And Bishop E four somehow is a very strong move. Bishop E four, Bishop E four was played now. Knight e4, I think, Dragon. Just, just get the knight closer as well, possibly mm -hmm. to g3, f5. Uh, rook e7 is a threat yeah. in some positions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things are not looking very good. Things are not looking very good for black. So Nicholas Theodore. It's just like a second ago, it looked like Yu Yang Yi was under like a little bit of pressure, and now all of a sudden, right. it's just kind of flipped on its head. And it's um, like, oh well, yeah, why he's always it? had it. He's always been under control. Did he win just three in a row, Yu Yangi? I mean, oh, uh, considering he wins, yeah, yeah, yeah. he wins this one. So he started relatively slow, and then I think yeah. this is how he's he's done this before. Yu Yangi, he won the the twenty twenty two Summer Classic. If I remember right, he lost the first game in that one, and then just battled his way all the way back. It feels like I don't know. Sometimes these the strongest players in the field, it feels like they do so well at the very end of the tournaments, mm -hmm. and I don't know if that's just like better stamina or if they're you know I don't know just random or. Do you think there's actually something there? Did stronger players are they stronger because they yeah, just like do maybe, better at the end? Maybe they're stronger. You know, <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're stronger, right? What no, is going yeah, on? Yeah, but really nowadays, even like in Magnus's case, it's very rarely a blowout. So he starts yeah. five out of five and so on. Yeah, so it's much more often that yeah he has this little bit of energy left when yeah. nobody else has. Huh. Right. Just, so maybe that's maybe that's the case. Well, with Yu Yang Yi, that that seems what the thing that happens right now. Yeah. He loves, he loves coming behind and winning those last several Absolutely. games, winning tournaments that way. So that's move 37, and this might as well be like finished right after they reach move 40, because Black King is in a huge amount of trouble. Uh, okay. Vien versus Ganguly. Uh, okay, a lot, lot of stuff happened, and yeah, it does look winning for White. Yeah, Von Nguyen trying to catch up with the leader. Yep. So his point is, yeah, this pawn will cost black a rook. Black's pawn perhaps will cost me a bishop, but then my <laughs> king is much closer to absolutely. the remaining pawn. So this looks absolutely winning for white. And yeah, and Neiman's game, uh, someone posted in the chat, uh, Vidit has b5 only winning. Oh, okay. So that's already... So, this, so it's actually interesting though. I mean, before, I don't know what the computer says you had to open a second ago, but sometimes these like these particular kinds of end games, if it's minus one or minus two, like still even then, like sometimes it's not quite like winning, but it could be. It obviously very, yeah. very easily might be. But on the other hand, I mean, what, what's the other moves that you, if not B5? I mean, no, you take uh, the, you know the most, I mean? like, but you, still like <laughs> B5 yeah. is the most tempting move, I would say. So still, I'd, yeah, B5 looks very Try strong. Try B5 or Bishop F5, yeah, two, two so, options. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's another temptation. I don't know, you might so grab the pawn. We, we may say 50% chance. B5 or or not think, B5. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. <Yeah. laughs> I don't know. Once you see B5, though, it does look like, how do you not play it once you see it? Yeah. All right. All so right, definitely so we'll keep our eye. We'll be watching this one. So very good chance. Yeah. Mm, and the B group. The B mm -hmm. group, not a single result here. Beautiful. Uh, Christian. Christian. Is this one we kind of flip flopped. Oh wait earlier. a second! I mean, he did, he didn't get any of those pawns. I mean, what what happened? <laughs> what happened? So, no, Bishop G three was my silly analysis. So instead, no, no, no. All right, what well, really on happened? A second. Need to need to go back to this one. Yeah. Okay. Finally, okay. finally. Rook F four. Bishop A seven. He perhaps mm -hmm. was very no. He wasn't long on time. King back okay. to D seven. And that's a very unpleasant move to make. Rookie one, bishop d6, bishop c5. But now, who's winning? 
And, and why? <laughs> yes, that's but always the tough part. Still, Who's still I want to say, still I want to say, push the C pawn. That's the best you can do. But now with bishop being traded, mm -hmm. it's not already not mm -hmm. that uh, tricky, right? Stockfish says it's bl back to equal. Uh, bishop takes f5. Ah, yeah. So we are still talking Hans's game. That's all they talk about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, logic. If you see any move in the chat, it's the Hans game. All right. So that that's the one for Chirila. I'm not even sure what uh, what happens there. Uh, hopefully, black, yeah, c3, rook to c1, and okay. then what you do is a check, king goes, rook c4, and with rook behind the pass. Is this pawn. still good for Christian, though? Um, I don't think he's winning. It's not as good, obviously. Yeah, I don't think he's uh, winning any longer, but yeah. shouldn't be, shouldn't be like, shouldn't be lost. Uh, Vidit minus two people. Well, yeah, once again, they love, we got to go back. Yeah, but that's exactly what B5 you were, was played, is what we've but been wait told. A sec. But that's exactly what you were uh, talking about. That uh, minus two in this end game mm -hmm. might be nothing. It's like and minus you have two. To go, you have to go deep. It actually means yes, black is two pawns up. Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> so it's material or pawn up and then yeah. know, better. So if computer would see how those pawns promote and win the bishop, right. that'd be minus give infinity. You, give you right? a number, it's minus yeah. sixty. Uh, right. So therefore, it does look very appealing with the pawn on b three and ability to say play h five mm -hmm. or something. But what I'm saying, it's still not done. Right. Right. I mean, we can we can go pretty deep on this one. We can try. H five is correct. H five is correct. It could be strangely enough. Now that I'm thinking, it could be that black is kind of tempo short. So it could be a tempo. You're telling like me you tempo calculated this game. one down to no, the no, end no, no, just by one tempo. Of course, of course not doubt in the end. No, my point <laughs> is, king f seven, and right. you promise to pass, and then I go g six, and at least I have two passed pawns on the other side of sure. the board, right? Right. And then. Yeah, I'm still not convinced this is winning, but at least there is a chance. But black, uh, uh, white won't pass, he'll go h5. Mm -hmm. He'll go h5, yeah, yeah. and now if the king is far enough, let's say on d5, then there's always going to be this h6 bishop takes, and then white's very likely to trade his f-pawn for the remaining mm -hmm. black pawn. So can we just put a bunch of moves on the board? Let's let this king try to run all the way in, and let's see <laughs> Yeah, let's just follow what Stockfish has to say. Yeah. So, so it's bishop to c2. And it used to say plus three just mm -hmm. a second ago. Okay, so it's something like, I guess, probably minus three. Uh, minus three, right. <laughs> uh, bishop b2, bishop d3. But look what Let's the, do it. Let's see if look Stockfish can win this yeah, position. Look what it's doing. I mean, it's kind of... <laughs> okay, yes, king runs a, that way. King runs that way. Okay, bishop back. Okay. Uh, so at least to see... Uh, to see what the point is. Ah, and it goes wow. from here... A completely different idea. Yeah, so the bishop has to pin uh, to be pinned down to kind of stop the b pawn, and then the black and king then, enters this way. And then this stupid king, it gets to <laughs> look, it gets to h five, and combined with bishop d three, oh, white drops one oh, of the pawns. Oh, so wow. white also has to have this idea in mind. Oh my! And yeah, and now, now we don't even know if it's possible or not because. It still changes what it has to say. I mean, it's uh, yeah, like if this happens, if the king's on h3 yeah. and bishop e2 happens, or king on h7 and bishop e2 happens, black's win. But <laughs> could white possibly somehow prevent it? This much we don't know. Because here, for instance, machine all of a sudden starts capturing h5. Okay. And bishop f5. And I would expect this one to be winning, right. if I'm perfectly honest, because they, that's like, yeah, that's uh, two. Uh, two passed pawns, and also an ability to go to b1 to capture this guy. But, yeah. Wow. All right. So, I mean, all right. Well, obviously, we're keeping our eye on this one a lot of different ways. Some crazy engine lines that maybe are winning, maybe not. We still are kind of keeping our eye here. But we have a ton of results. Uh, we have results in the... Uh, Von Win game. We have results yeah. in the Yu Yang Yi game. One win. We have a lot of stuff. Wins These are our tournament leaders. So, Okay. Wins against Ganguly, and once again, I'll not go over the entire game, but it turns out the moment we tuned in, the moment we tuned in, uh, Black could have played a five, guard the square, not let the king run over there, and this would have been just a marginal age for White. Mm -hmm. And bishop f4, king e4 tends to be absolutely lost. Yeah, okay, and yeah, we saw around here just this white king Specifically because so of, yeah, uh, okay, now if the bishop goes away, 
I presume all this plan that I've described, yeah, the king goes and then, you know, yeah. So black tried to go kind of rogue mode, king c4, engage into some, you know, some pawn races, but there is no race white is by, by faster by a mile. Very much, like king yeah. King f6, d7, king, yeah. Very strong. So this is where this game came yeah, to its end. That's so. the end. Yeah, that's yeah the congrats end. to uh, Von Nguyen. He was sitting at three and a half. He was a half point behind coming into this, so he has gone all the way up to four and a half now. But Yu Yang Yi was also one of the leaders on four points, yeah, if I remember correctly. And he has And he five. has won. So he manages to keep the lead in this event. So now... Let me see. And you, this one was interesting too. We've been talking about it because yeah, it looked like he was under a little bit of pressure, but maybe he never was. Maybe he always had everything crazy under control. Crazy because all that, despite this one looking kind of scary, mm -hmm. it never was in Black's favor. Okay. So it's yeah, around it's so equal, <laughs> slight plus for white, around equal, and then F3, the move that we initially liked right. a lot. It looks scary. Mm, it was it wasn't that great. It turns out <laughs> it wasn't that great. It turns out, yes, yeah, so it's like Compi says. Yeah, rook, what I meant was no, rook f seven was rook f seven was, yeah, was better. Material after rook out for something. Yeah. So f three captures uh, a brilliant move. Rook takes b seven. Okay, queen mm -hmm. h six. Rook b six. Um, yeah. Even Compi mm -hmm. agrees that yeah, you should take um, the pawn on d seven and not the bishop. Okay. Rook takes. And rook takes is a big mistake. Queen takes was better, but then if queen takes, apparently lose all your we're attack. no longer talking about the attack. Yeah, it's just try to consolidate. It's still kind of plus one for right. white, but yeah, what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and rook f6, this all out thing, apparently was not working. Yeah, queen and h4, just easily rook escapes one. and gets a good position. Yeah, a check, queen e3, Incredible. rook g6, that's what we've seen. Knight e4, a check. Yeah, he was also very short on time. Mm -hmm. Rook, ah, yeah, queen f3. So that's brutal. Just not even, queens, not huh? even like trying to attack the king. Oh. I mean, he says, "Man, I'm quite I'm just a, winning. <laughs> quite a few pawns up." Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, and he went could be one uh, resigned immediately because it's yeah, it drops the knight with, with a check, check and, and perhaps the checkmate is, oh, is wow. somewhere near. So it's, yeah, it's incredible. And I, I want to actually know: Did you like think maybe during the game? Did you ever think that he was under time pressure or what? I don't know. But we have an interview, so maybe we'll get to know that interview. And let's listen to you and see what he had to say about his game. Hi, I'm here with Yu Yang Yi, fresh off his victory against Nicholas Theodoru. Yu Yang Yi, you just had a great game. You know, you want to tell me all about it? Oh, okay. This game is a very interesting game. Yeah. Bec yeah. In Argentina, in Swiss, in Kofu, variation is. Here is normal, yes. Yeah, necessary if. Yeah. Here, a long thing. Yeah. US, I don't know. Yeah. Me very interesting idea because sometimes bishop d7 will be three yeah next maybe will be six i don't know queen h8 b3 queen e8 bishop f4 bishop d8 queen d4 here if you black play bishop a take c5 bishop c7 take hunt take queen d2 i think white is better yeah okay <laughs> maybe confuse this oh Oh, D four. Okay. Bishop F six, Queen D two, Queen E seven, C five, G five, Queen G seven, Bishop E three, F four. Here maybe Bishop D four is better. Yeah. Bishop F five, Rook D one. Looks white. White is dangerous. I don't know. This position. Bishop C five. I play Bishop C five. Maybe slightly mistake, I don't know. Bishop f4, b7. Here, ref d8, maybe. Interesting. Mm -hmm. f3, take, take, rook b7. I miss queen h6. I think queen h6 could move here. Yeah. Here, a long, very important session because but if you play Rui one knight g4, h3, e3, white is lost. And ruby 6 only more of yes. Here, if you black play queen g4, ruby 6, queen g4, take, take, ruby 8, white is winning. Knight d7. Oh, oh. 
Yes. Here, a UA six nine five, UA one. Maybe white is okay, but looks very dangerous. I play UA six. Here, my opponent maybe, uh, is blunder. UA six take. Here, only move King F six take take. Mm -hmm. Maybe Bishop D one. Okay. Because. Uh, my opponent needs queen h3, knight e4, rook h6, queen c3, check, king g8, queen c7, yes. This is the argument. Save h2 pawn. Okay. Rook 6 pawn take, take, take. Queen h4, v1. Control e5. Rook 6 check g7 king e3 take king f4 this position white is winning position bishop e4 take take queen g oh sorry okay queen h1 king e2 queen g6 queen f3 yes my opponent blunder queen b1 because queen h3 is lost tonight okay <laughs> Uh, well, that's going to be an amazing game for me. That's going to put you up at five points now going into the next round. How are you feeling? Yes, uh, very happy, yes. Well, that's great to hear, Yang Yi. Uh, we yes. look forward to seeing more chess from you in the previous games. Mm -hmm. That was Yu Yang Yi, and this might be a huge result for the A group because now he is sitting in the sole lead. He was coming into today, he had four points just like Gregory Oparin. Yep. He wins, but Oparin might actually be in a little bit of danger. It could be a situation where we have two sole leaders when this day is over. A lot has been um, happening. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so indeed, Oparin is in quite a bit of trouble. It's a rook hand game, or only one pawn up for only oh, one. Uh, sometimes yeah. that's all you need. Yeah, like sometimes it's not enough as well. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but this is another one too. But just to give like an example of like a position a computer might not fully be able to trust is somebody winning or not. Sometimes these yeah, kinds of end so games too. If I hear computer claims that, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure. So once again, I picked up the computer's evaluation. Okay. If, if it says plus three in yeah, the position, but it's one extra pawn, that means that that's White makes progress. Not only he's a pawn up, mm -hmm. but he will make progress in foreseeable future. Yeah, absolutely. So this is looking very bad for Gregory Oparin, who came into the day again tied with Yu Yang Yi. Yu actually won. Oparin is in a lot of danger, so this could mean uh, quite a lot for the tournament. Yeah, but. Of course, the game of the day. Let's yes. let's let's this see. Incredible game. Let's see, and I guess not, um, Hans kind of got tricked. No. Okay. So we did get to this position. So Bishop B two, sure. H G four, King G four, King H seven. This was now, played. Uh, not yet. This was. So I mean, currently that's the position. Huh. That's the position. So White, I presume. I mean, you don't have much to do but to take sure. it. King F, uh, King H seven, and I was thinking, yeah, okay, but what do you do if a black yeah. waits? Right, because you can't you move your bishop anymore, and it's you can't really move your king. It's man, it's getting dicey. Yeah, so you'll have to go H five perhaps, but then yeah, once again, then black gives a check. You don't want to be dropping this one, so king h4, and then again evading move. <laughs> because keep it, it, huh? it's so strange, those Tsukswangs, right? I mean, I know that there's no Tsukswang, never mind. Here you can actually. Yeah, you pass with the bishop. Here this you can actually go back and give a check. So hey, hang on a second. That, that, that one, we, we actually yeah. missed the win. felt close to that, yeah. We felt actually missed the win. win. We missed the win, which was give oh, a right. check first I'm to stop each five. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Fresh right. makes Start sense. Check. So now we go here. Yeah. And, and now tell King me all H7. about your win. Take uh -huh. me through it and show and me the sauce, C1. man. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Let's okay. look at the game. I don't understand what's going on. Played with white yeah. against Kanguli. Like imagine this one with white to move, um, King h3 is still a move. Mm -hmm. so really it's been a bit out of shape this tournament, so I, I wanted to play. Then. With the, say, king on h3. Yeah, but that, that's Man. kind of 
a lose it win, you know. You yeah, some even crazy the compi, stuff. The compi, the compi, it keeps minus five and then, oh no, wait. Just there. kidding, yeah, it was, maybe I, was, I can't figure it out. Yeah, and yeah, I saw yeah. someone in the chat, I mean, said, you know, they're running maybe a deeper engine, they got to depth 80 or something, not very hard to do, I guess, in a position this simplified, but even then the computer was a little confused. It's kind of this wild one where it's like, All righty. I don't know, is Hans losing, is he not? And that's what the first time, I believe, uh, during our coverage is, for whatever reason, well, the audience yeah. is, a lot, a, a lot of people, but not very active in the chat. So first time, <laughs> yes. Restream awarded me some page uh, saying 100 messages today. Thanks very much, guys. Thank Keep you them guys coming. for being so active. Yes. And also, did you know, on YouTube, when you click the like button now, there's confetti. Yes. It's so fun. Animation. We're at 45 likes. If you want to hit the button, you can make it explode. It's so much fun. Hit the like button. It's really cool now. Okie dokie. So two... Very tricky end games, right? The bishop, bishop d1 was already played. King went to g3. And for what we know, <laughs> Black is kind of winning, but even computer is not, show, not sure how exactly does he do it. It worked. We got a lot of likes. E yeah, that, that, that was cool. That was cool. And the b tournament. The b tournament, we do have our first result, and this is a draw for Christian. And okay. For Christian in coverage, and that's a that's a funny position to look at because <laughs> there is no king. <laughs> Where did they go? Last move was <laughs> king e4, king takes. E4. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, yeah, remind yourself, games are played on the digital board, right? And whenever you move the piece, it yeah. reduces the move, so we get those live moves and <laughs> show and analyze. But right. it shows up like he ate the king. Yeah, and then. At the very end of the game, the draw agreed, and in order to register this draw, mm -hmm. they have to put the kings in the, in the center. And then, <laughs> then in orbital, perhaps, yeah. So I believe the correct way of doing it would be to lift black king first, kind yeah. of remove it, yeah. then put the white king on e4, then put the black king on e5. <laughs> but never mind. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what happened. And, and then, yeah, like... Uh, it's white, white realized he's a king down, black realized, uh, yeah, I'm winning, but... Uh, how do I suppose to checkmate my opponent? Exactly. He has no so king. A draw was agreed. And therefore a draw was <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we have Lendemann. Whoa. With a very active pieces, okay. including the king on h4. Uh, okay. That it still looks very actually gets, white, right? Yeah, actually gets very exciting. Uh, counting the pawns. It's equal now, and black can even take a three next mm -hmm. move. So apparently, Landemont has He's some idea some of, some yeah, sort of like attack. Like attacking the it king. Feels believable, but where is it? Yeah, it does. But yeah, exactly. How do you actually? <laughs> I believe how it. How do you actually? You get tell me there? where it is. No, how do you actually get there? Uh, maybe let let's yeah, let's go like a few moves back. Uh -huh. That's exactly yeah the scenario that I was describing, right? Mm -hmm. So B six kick the knight away, and he voluntarily goes bishop f7 in order to have this c5 threat. Right, yeah. And white went with g5, okay. rook to d5 traded, rook g1, rook g8, queen f8. It's an awkward, yeah, awkward way of defending the king, but then the rook gets active. So mm. knight to e4, a okay. check, and bishop e8, white goes h5. Mm. Not sure what would have happened if bishop takes h5. Maybe some knight. Ah, yeah, that's actually some brilliant stuff. There's knight f6. Back rank queen in incursions. Yeah. Queen and sneaking check, in. Oh. And checkmate on g8. And that's why you actually need the bishop on e8. So it blocks, mm. like, blocks the yeah, eighth blocks rank the physically. Queen coming in. Right. King h4. And what happens if rook a3? Let's say. Okay, I understand it's naive and probably will never be played, but yes, yeah, so white apparently is winning with some knight d6. And why is that? It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Well, the, the threat. Taking the bishop. I kind of understand the threat, right? Take the bishop. Ah, yeah. And whenever you move the bishop, knight f7 wins immediately, kind of. Mm. Right. You can. Yeah, there's you always can ways really for the white queen to sneak in. They can sneak yeah. in either way. Or rook g6. Yeah, like everything. Rook g6 wins. Yeah. Knight f7 mm -hmm. wins. Yeah. So basically, you need to join the action with the queen, and that's that's winning. Um, apparently, it is already winning after King H4, no matter what. Okay, so I, yeah, I believe it. And this could be. I mean, Landerman is going to be running away with this with the win mm -hmm. here. He came in a point ahead of the field. I mean, with two games left, he could be two points ahead of everybody. I mean, this this All is right. just huge stuff. 
What's my opinion on Chivila competing? Uh, what's my opinion? I mean, yeah. I've been in his shoes, like trying to play one of those fall classics back in 2018, and it didn't go. It didn't go it's, well for me. It's kind of a crazy question. What do you expect us to say? We're against it. <laughs> like, what do you expect somebody yeah. to say? It's great. It's I awesome to see Christian playing. Do not support play. yeah. Christian playing chess again. <laughs> he should stick to commentary. <laughs> No, it's awesome. It's been wonderful seeing him. Uh, yeah, it's he's, just that, he's put yeah, together some wins. You the know, the point is like it's really rough coming back to professional play. Absolutely. Even yeah. if you you have you know you have been into chess, like it's it's yeah. not like he quit to play right, at right, a right. baseball or ice hockey, right? But uh, uh, I he mean, was it's, always yeah. around commentating, training, and so on. But it's not the same thing. It's not the same animal. You're a professional player mm -hmm. and you're training for yourself, mm -hmm. or you, I don't know, teaching kids, or yeah. maybe even working with the strong players, but on his, say, his demands, his questions. Yeah. And on a serious level, it's very admirable because you know, like when you get to like a certain rating and you might not be at that anymore, it's very easy to be like, "I'm done. <laughs> I'm yeah, taking the, the gloves off. I'm not going to fight that's anymore." That's what I'm doing because so. nobody nobody enjoys losing. You know? <laughs> so yeah, it's been great seeing Christian play. Yeah. Okay. So Landemann seemingly is winning, and we absolutely have to check how is uh, the game of Christopher Yu. Oh yeah, this was uh, a big one. That's too. the one. That's the one. Christopher was in uh, trouble and probably and still, he still is. is. Yeah, that's uh, like everything's winning. We are in a, I believe, in a table-based territory. Okay, so we <laughs> know the answer for sure. Table-based territory. Okay, one little thing to mention, which probably doesn't really, sure. doesn't does, really mean anything up. here, right? But with the king on f7 and no f pawn and bishop elsewhere, and then potentially. it's a draw. It's yeah. a draw. It was discovered uh, like w at the time where there was no no there were no engines mm -hmm. and so on. I think Botvinnik Sabo is Botvinnik. I'm guessing. Hmm. Yeah. So it was um, a joint game back in the yeah, day, and, they and then so they, they were realized. Yeah, and, and Botvinnik kind of specifically went for this setup, oh, like well. being do down yeah. upon an exchange, and it happened to be a draw. But but yeah. But here you kind of have an extra, a bonus F pawn. So White's task should be trivial because you are allowed to exchange these guys for the bishop and just make sure that you have the opposition in the, in the final position. Absolutely. Right, so it should be, it should be more, than, more than easy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, by the way, why he went. I'm guessing the easiest way would be to just take this route. Basically, so you just go f4 so that your rook does not, uh, well, your rook will never be disturbed. Pawn on f4 cannot be taken because then just attack the seventh mm -hmm. rank, go f7. So literally, I just go f4 and black's waiting and I just go king d4. Yeah, takes rook d7. Okay, you think uh, something like that. I still play rook d7. Mm. So and th that would be Very pretty mean. pretty straightforward, you know, that kind of schematic thinking. f4 nice and nothing move. can stop me from getting the king to e7. Yeah. So that's. But yeah. anyway, um, anyway, there is no doubt he's gonna win. There's no doubt he's. Gonna All win. right. So Christopher might be losing this one. Gurgly Kantar maybe perhaps getting a very All big win right. here. And uh, speaking of big wins, we do have. We showed the game with Von Nguyen, who now is a half point behind Yu Yang Yi in yep. the top uh, mm -hmm. in the A group. And we're actually gonna be able to see his thoughts on the game because we have yet another interview. Let's check All it out. All right. All right, I am here with Grandmaster Nin, fresh off his victory off of Grandmaster Don Guli. And tell me all about your win, take me through it, and show me the sauce, man. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's look at the game. Uh, today <clears throat> I played with White against Ganguli, um, who has been a bit out of shape this tournament, so I wanted to play not too aggressively, but uh, I wanted a game, so I decided to go e4, and uh, we played the Italian. Uh, knight of 6, d3, it's all normal. And here he surprised me on move 4 already. I was out of book. Um, he played d5, which I hadn't looked at in uh, around 2 years already. But, uh, okay, e takes d5 is forced. Knight takes d5, short castle, bishop e7, rook e1, and f6. So um, the point of this line is uh, to not study all the subtleties of Italian, because uh, it's quite a complex opening and... Uh, there are many setups for white, for black, it's quite a... Uh, it's very complicated, so he decided to prepare a very direct line, which has a reputation of being slightly worse, but on the other hand, it puts a pressure on white to really 
um, he has to play quite precise to keep the edge because it's quite uh, forcing what black is doing. So here, I know that uh, there is c3, there's h3. I remember um, c3, bishop g4, and uh, something like h3, bishop h5, bishop b3, and it, it's interesting, but it's quite a big fight. And um, today, uh, although I wanted to fight, he was well prepared, so I decided to go for the most direct line, which is d4. I vaguely remembered uh, knight b6, bishop b3, knight d4, knight d4, queen d4, queen d4, e d4. This endgame is supposed to be okay for black, but uh, white doesn't run much risk. So I went bishop f4, bishop f5. So here I was wondering um, if I cannot go a4. It's uh, quite an interesting move. And here I thought that uh, maybe he'll go, let's say, king d7. I can go a5, kick his knight, knight c8. Um, but I assume that he's uh, still pre uh, in preparation. Maybe I have c3 here or knight d2. I'm not sure. But um, again, I'm pawned down and he's prepared So, because he's been blitzing out every move until now. So I decided to just take on c7, make life simple, and after king d7 to go knight d2. Um, now I think he went the only logical move, bishop c5. And uh, yeah, here I can go first bishop takes a, uh, b6, a takes b6. And let's say knight e4. But here he's not forced to take on e4. I thought maybe he'll go like rook to e8. And it feels quite drawish, knight g3, bishop g6. I didn't see why I should be better. He has a pair of bishops. I have uh, a better pawn structure. So it doesn't look clear. So instead I went knight e4. Um, and uh, here um, the interesting line is bishop b4. Uh, he's, he could have gone for that. Bishop takes b6. Bishop takes c1. But here I have uh, bishop a4 check. And uh, it might seem that black is losing, but I was actually wondering if uh, I have anything at all, because after bishop a4 check, king e6. Um, so first of all, rook takes e1 doesn't really work, because a takes b6, knight g3, check, king f7. Um, his bishop's hanging, but my bishop's also hanging. So after bishop b3, he can just go king g6, and he's uh, he's probably winning. So um, instead, uh, after bishop a4 checking e6, um, I can at least go bishop b3 and he has to go back to d7. Um, I was a bit worried that he might do this because it felt to me like just a draw. But okay, I was gonna think uh, computer is suggesting bishop takes d4 after king e6 and the game still goes on, it's probably around equal. Um, instead, he just took on e4 uh, on move 15, which surprised me. And I was actually uh, very happy to see this because of the bishop b6, a b6, rook takes e4. Although um, it's opposite color bishops, um, I have an edge here because I have a better pawn structure and it's not easy for him to deal with some concrete issues. So he went b5 because rook to e8, I just take on e8 and he cannot recapture with the rook because of bishop a4. So it's a bit unpleasant, that's why he went b5. Rook a1, and I think here uh, he really should have made uh, life simpler for him and gone rook e8, although it's a bit sad uh, to go rook e8, rook takes e8, rook takes e8, rook takes e8, king takes e8, um, because he gives up a pawn, let's say bishop d5, but I think here it's very strong for him to go, let's say b4, bishop takes b7, and d3, which is critical, and c takes d3, uh, bishop d4, b3, and uh, this position, although he's pa two pawns down, um, I think it's just a draw because he can go f5, followed by g6, and king comes f6. It's I think it's a fortress. I have uh, analyzed uh, similar positions from other openings, and this motive with uh, b4, d3, and bishop d4 I've seen before, and usually it's just a draw. So that's why rook to e8 is um, from what I, I think it's the best move and it should lead to a draw. However, he... Um, he was a bit worried maybe it's like possible to lose. So he went rook a d8 keeping all his pawns. But now I went h4 expanding and um, he has some weaknesses on the king side. King c7 h5 just fixing the king side. h6 was a very bad move I thought. Like here I think d3 was supposed to be played. c takes d3 I would have gone. Rook takes d3, rook g4 and rook d7. And I am better but uh, it's not clear how to proceed. Instead, he went h6, which uh, I was now I was getting quite optimistic, in fact. So I went uh, rook g4, rook d7, king f1, rook hd8. So I understood that he wants bishop f8. Uh, he wants to go bishop f8, followed by d3, and free his rook from the defense of the g7 pawn. 
that's why I decided to go bishop e6, rook e7, bishop to f5. Trade one pair of rooks, but now um, he has some concrete issues. So if he goes bishop f8, then I'll just come with a king to d3 and pick up the d4 pawn. So that's why he played rook to e8 check instead. King f1, rook e7, and now a3. And this is very unpleasant because um, he can either give up the pawn like in the game or he can, after a3, go, let's say, bishop b6. I would go, let's say, b4 and uh, king c6, bishop d3. I mean, he's no pawns down, but everything is... Um, like, rook has to defend g7, bishop has to defend d4, and the king has to defend b5. So um, he has no moves, no counterplay, and I'll just come slowly with the king to g6, and probably it's going to be lost, although it's still not so simple because my king is cut off and it's not easy to get to g6. But I think it should be winning. So he played correct, he went b4, a move 27, a takes b4, bishop takes b4, c3, he, like this I gain a pawn, bishop c5, c takes d4, bishop b4, f3, and here probably objectively it should be a draw, but I'm pawn up for free, and after king d6 I went d5, bishop d2, bishop e6, my bishop sits very nicely on e6. Um, here he went correct, because I want to go either rook a4 or rook c4 and, uh, and attack the g7 pawn from behind, so he went b5, king e2, bishop c1. Rook b4, king c5, rook b3. This was a very logical sequence, I thought. b4, and king d3. And here it's a very nasty position, because let's say he makes a move which looks logical, like rook a7 on move uh, 37, then he would lose, because I would go g3, and his bishop would be trapped. f5, f4, and uh, I just go king c2 and collect his uh, bishop. So that's why um, after... King d3, he went bishop f4, he saw um, the threat, but it's probably also a blunder. Um, it's what computer says. I mean, here, after king d3, it's already very tricky, I thought. But bishop f4, I went king e4. If you go bishop d6 here, I just go, let's say, f4 or king f5, and king goes to g6, it should be lost. So instead, he went bishop e5, I went f4. And uh, yeah, I mean, if he just sits tight, I just go king to g6 and it should be slowly winning. So he had a last ditch uh, attempt with king c4 because here it's my 40th move and uh, I had not much time, so I had to calculate precisely. Um, here I have two options, rook takes b4 or f takes e5. Both should be winning, but f takes e5 I calculated was really clean because of the king takes b3, e f6, g f6, king f5. Although he has his own pass pawn after king takes b2, but my pawn is just way too fast. d6, rook e8, king takes f6, and uh, he resigned here because, let's say, b3, d7, let's say, rook d8, or I don't know, doesn't matter. Let's say rook h8, king e7, king c3, I can take on b3, and um, in the pawn end game, I'll just uh, be too fast. And uh, yeah, two against one, and eventually I'll queen, so... Uh, so he just resigned after uh, king takes f6, and uh, yeah, that was my game. Well, that's lovely to hear. Four and a half points is obviously an amazing score. You're going to be playing Nicholas Theodoru tomorrow with the Black Thief. How are you feeling about that matchup? Well, uh, it's going to be an interesting game, I, I hope. Um, I don't know him too well. Um, it's the first time I think I see him at a chess tournament, but uh, I know that he's quite a strong online player and uh, his rating is around 2600. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the game and uh, let's see what happens. All right. Thanks for having on. Thanks for coming on and uh, we hope to see you uh, back in the studio soon. Yeah, thanks. Well, that was Tai Von Nguyen. With that win, now he'll be at four and a half points, a half point behind the leader. So this is a competitor to really keep our eye on. Now, traditionally, this is where our show generally starts to wrap up, but I think we still have some things to look forward to. And I'd like to just keep the show going. And oh, yeah. maybe we can keep our eye, particularly on Absolutely. that Hans game. I don't know if there's been any changes in it or what. Oh. Hans is obviously struggling. Maybe can hold on, maybe can't. Uh, the king did run, it looks like, the way that kind of, I thought was a little more human. Yeah. So not the stockfish approach. Yeah. No, 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 no. Well, Vidit actually kind of did try the stockfish approach. Okay. Han was... Hans was precise with bishop c1 and waiting on h3, okay, the, the one nice. that we figured yeah. out. Yeah, so okay. that if black attempts to do something like that, white has indeed kind of okay. has those waiting. He has a moves. way to keep waiting. Yeah. 
here and then the king starts to run in the opposite direction but it's also dangerous now for white with the bishop black bishop being on d1 mm -hmm. because remember i was talking with uh, the bishop on long diagonal white would have yes. a source of counterplay like h5 and maybe h4 this has been taken away and from maybe them. yeah maybe now with the bishop on d1 you actually do not have an access to this oh, one this might be insanely so king clever by four, king e7 check from here king d7 king e4 so now okay. he's what he's running yeah. into a square of this pawn or something right no but he cannot right now bishop c2 pushes the king back mm -hmm. ah but then h5 is a trade okay. okay so if king c6 then then what can he already play h5 yes or because f pawn cannot be guarded right so it does lose the h pawn but mm -hmm. then bishop b2 and now you switch back and he'll take and go back I mean, it's, it's crazy oh wow it might be still winning you know with some like dvoretsky style stuff bishops bishop f7 then h5 and bishop is in one diagonal stopping the f pawn and holding oh. uh, kind of protecting the h pawn <laughs> so oh man actually a very very tricky and insanely game. tricky this is like one of the hardest end games we've seen yeah, that's a very tricky What do you idea. think the odds are? Like, is Hans going to hold this? Like, if he had to put, I don't know, a percentage on it? E what are the chances that Hans makes a draw? Um, hmm. More than 50%. Right. I, I believe more than, more than 50%. 50%. Since he, he has shown already, like, like yeah, he identified the threat here, threat mm -hmm. here. Still. And another interesting conversation. So chat was mentioning the disparity on the clocks. I would see this in the corner of my eye. We can see that Hans still has 47 minutes, fitted around 12 minutes overall. Is the correct approach, for if you're defending this as white, to try to move as fast as you can, put as much pressure on the opponent to come up with these hard ideas as quickly as possible? Or do you still want to take your time and you know, Honestly, play accurately? I don't know. What do you do? I don't know. So there could be two possible reasons for Hans playing fast. Because, sure. uh, well, options, I mean, possibilities are this is a draw, and then you kind of figured out the way how the fortress works mm -hmm. and you don't care any longer, right? I mean, and then you just play fast because you know, okay, you if he goes here, I have to go here. And so Understandable. Alternatively, he might actually see some dangerous way that mm -hmm. he is not sure how to make a draw. And then perhaps what you can do, because white's defense is still limited, right? It's right. not like white has any sort of, oh, let's play this crazy <laughs> counter-attacking move. I mean, you mm -hmm. shuffle the bishop on, on like two squares and, and, and the king has to guard the pawn right. all the time. So if you figured out that black, uh, black actually has some attempt that you are not sure how to make a draw against, you probably start kind of trying to apply at least some time pressure yeah. and so on. And you know, you see it confidently and you move this bishop to <laughs> c1 and back to a3 and like, why are we still playing? Mm -hmm. It's a draw, don't you see? Uh, <laughs> I mean, well, this we will of... stay on the air until this one is over, but I know oh, yeah. that we maybe do have some results, uh, particularly in the B section, I believe. Uh, yeah, results in the B section. Let's find out. Landeman wins and confirmed as the sole leader with by a, a lot. By, <laughs> by at least two points. I'm actually wondering if... Yeah, so he's, uh, he's two points clear of both Raunak and... Christopher Yu. Yeah, so Christopher Yu lost today, so that's going to be two points yeah. over Christopher Yu. But could it be that someone and he beat actually Ronak, catches so up? So he's two yeah, points yeah. ahead. Yeah. So, so theoretically, there's two more days. Uh, Somebody could still catch him and force a playoff. Uh, reminder: two days ago, the, those three were tied for the first place. I know. So Lendemann had no up. plans of slowing down. He <laughs> won both games, and his rivals yeah. lost both games. Amazing. So we can take a look at the last few moves. Yeah, here. the last remaining moves. H5 and king went to H4, C5, and yeah. So basically, black mm -hmm. couldn't really figure out the way to stop knight D6. Maybe there was no way of stopping knight. So bishop D7, and he ran into rook G6, and yeah. As yeah, soon as that, that queen gets just in, a, just a disaster, right? Uh, once again, how does he win in this case? Ah, just goes rook G4, mm -hmm. a check, and. Uh, rook g6 and king g4 because at first i wasn't sure like yeah the, the h5 pawn still alive this one's pinned right so sure it's, it's <laughs> yeah. almost like you can almost, take the rook on g6 but, but almost doesn't count yep so very nice for lenderman who is i mean the very clear favorite to uh, win the yeah. b section we in fact in b tournament we only have one game okay. going it's chandra against haruchinyan and here uh well once again a lot of stuff happened that's a position that 
apparently has to be winning for black with an extra knight for a pawn, but sometimes those, uh, you know, those end games on one wing mm -hmm. and one on, say, on, on everything on the king side, and white still has kind of a flexible structure, so no major weaknesses, they, they might be tricky. They might mm -hmm. be tricky because there's always potential that white starts swapping the pawns and you're left with like rook and knight against rook. It's mm -hmm. not enough, yeah. Uh, all right, all right. So let's go to Hans's game. I think that that's the one that will be concentrating on. Just uh, yeah, the bishop, uh, bishop c two, king okay. f four, king to c six is what we have oh. currently. So this h five line. How is h five possible here? Do we start with bishop to b two? Yeah, well, I mean we could, we could start with bishop to b two. Unless we're allowing bishop d one or something. Like probably. Ah, hang on a second. You might be right. Yes, after bishop d two. It might be very clever for black to go bishop d1 because after this, you you probably have the, will have the same position, but which, with king being much more active. Mm -hmm. So you can go to c5. Let's say, yeah, like check here, bishop back, and then you can give this check, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, like king f4, king d3. Now yeah, h5 will be certainly too late, right? But yeah, running out of time for this. Captures, captures, and then uh, how do we do it? Well, actually, Bishop H5 now, I'm 100% oh, sure is clever. 100% <laughs> sure is clever because you'll go here. No, seriously, mm -hmm. you'll go here. He's still not in time to take this, right? So but you'll mm -hmm. go here and you go H5, mm -hmm. and then white has no counterplay. Oh. And you win the bishop, and whenever he gets to F7, you take on F7, the H pawn to wow. go. So that's, okay, so in maybe theory, it, this yeah. is the plan. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe in this position, it, can white get away with like h5, h6 now? Yeah, maybe maybe let's try h5 immediately. I guess we're just assuming black forces us to play h6 or something, or, or you can improve yeah. the king Yeah, you well. probably still run with the king kind of up a board. Mm -hmm. And isn't it any different now that I'm thinking? Is it any different? Ah, yeah, yeah, uh, white, this way white kind of wins uh, white wins a couple of tempi, right, for this line, because the bishop is on c2. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and let's kind of highlight the difference. Ba maybe king c4 was, no, nah, yeah, king c4 I had to do. Captures here, bishop f6, I think this will be, first of all, it, it's kind of I don't see the harder, harder for black to get there. Yeah, I don't, ah. Okay, say he goes, still still try, attempts the same. Yeah. Still attempts the same. Bishop b2, bishop mm -hmm. h5. He's still in time. Ah, oh, no, king e5, right? Bishop <laughs> e8. It's very tricky. Indeed. So this h5, king d7 manages to even wow. pu push the bishop that away from this. That's kind of embarrassing. Push the bishop away from this diagonal, but then. Uh, we are entering like new territory because ah. this, pawn, this pawn can start start running, but also you can go bishop c6, bishop d5, and this is just winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm it's guessing looking like everything might work out for black here. Uh, right. <laughs> it's getting harder uh, and harder uh, to yeah. see how Hans on holds second. this one. H5. Yeah, so that, that's what that's the one we have on the board. So okay, so this was king played. c6, h5. Uh, well, the good thing though is. Uh, it cannot last forever this game because Vidit is like five minutes only, and that that's the most exciting, perhaps the most exciting <laughs> part. I, I understand, like we are. Do you think he's sweating it, or do you think he's just he's just happy to work it all out, chilling? How does Vidit feel right now? How does Vidit feel? Um, I'm guessing once again. I mean, I'm, I'm not you can't obviously I'm get not his Vidit. body and yeah, like, figure but, it out for me, uh, but uh, just speculating. Honestly, like if I would have a game like this, yeah. then someone in the middle game. Obviously, I felt like yeah, yeah. okay, it's all, all coming coming kind of yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably much better and so on. Mm -hmm. So I'd be disappointed when say we get this opposite colored bishops uh, with the rooks, and I'm probably kind of. Uh, yeah. I lost all of my advantage, so now I'm actually very excited. I mean, this moment, so, so maybe I still, maybe I still win. <laughs> maybe, maybe it happens. Yeah. So, so you so like that feeling, or do you, do you have any worry in the back of your mind, like you know what, I might be messing this all up. I might not ah, be so finding so it. I'll, I'll mess I it up. have this counter, like I, I should be winning, but I'm not going to find it. Do you have that fear in the back of your mind? No, not you're really, just, because you're just happy one, to have a winning position. No, seriously, I, I believe this one comes as the bonus because you already had like a very yeah. promising position that your opponent bailed himself out. Yeah. And okay. Probably had a draw at some point, sure. so now you, you're more relaxed in a way.
Okay. So it's, if it's your first attempt at winning, or rather <laughs> first chance of winning this position, then you have then you got that worry probably in the more back stressed. Of your mind. Right. Then you're probably more stressed. Yeah, so right. bishop to d1 happened. So now, okay. yeah, he absolutely has to go. Yes. Which is I mean, the other option was bringing the king closer immediately. But he plays bishop yeah, to d1. But he, once okay. again, he, he, he has this idea in mind. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if he finds it, by the way. So let's, yeah, because I keep insisting with the stupid bishop h5, let's uh, show why it is important. All right, so say this. King d3, how are we going to do it? Black always has it. That, 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 <laughs> that's the thing. Like black always has it. King d3. Let's say white waits. King c2. White waits. Just to make yeah. No, I wanted to to show how it doesn't work for for black. Mm -hmm. Like, but yeah, the, the only way you stop the f pawn, it's always going to be like bishop on f7, pawn on h5. Yeah. yeah so in fact, it, it might be easier winning than. <laughs> uh huh. Mm, All right, so there are yeah, some... Yeah, the is somewhat depressing. <laughs> Minus 8.8 .8 on not-so-deep stop. Yeah. So we have the six-man table base here. If we had the seven-man table base, we would have the absolute <laughs> certainty <laughs> of knowing. That's more dudes, yeah. But, uh, uh, Bishop, F, uh, Bishop F6 is going to make it. Yeah, the, the moment he captures the pawn, is going to make it uh, the okay, table And then base. we can declare that there is one and only one winning move for black. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? So that, that's what people say? That's what it says. I'm uh, cheating. I'm looking at your computer. <laughs> right there. Yeah. King c4. Ah, king c4 is winning and all the rest is... But, yeah, but, but what, but what all the rest? I mean, the kind of, once again, <laughs> table base is funny in a way. Bishop h5 is not going to get it done. Uh, Bishop h5 <laughs> is not going to get it done. Why is that? Because anything is draw, it says. But hang on a second. If I go here... No, I mean, I do believe the mm -hmm. table base, but it's just to figure yeah, it's it worth, out it's what's wrong. So now I don't see if the I'm difference. trying to move, ah, he blocks me from entering mm -hmm. with the queen. Okay, this is an important defensive that's, resource that's for clever. white. Look, and then, yeah, and then white kind of stands still, does nothing, and only, yeah, like, so now you need to, mm -hmm. the yeah. pawn to move. Ah, okay, that's how you make so now finally I'll be able to illustrate what I meant when I said, like, you know, principle one diagonal, right? Mm -hmm. So now in order to actually move this king away, because you'll never be able to... Approach that way. Snark king, the... right. Like, kind of king on e6 mm -hmm. will be met with king f4. So it's, it's sort of a guarding, a shouldering, right? And... In order to distract this king, you'll have to move the pawn, the h pawn, mm -hmm. right? Or wait a second, yeah, white yeah, So this is important move, to understand move what the happens. The h pawn, here. yeah, and then the king comes closer. And yeah, but now. And now you can distract that bishop with the other yeah, pawn. Yeah, bishop operates on two diagonals, and then you'll be able to push f7, distract the bishop, capture the h pawn. There you ah, go. So it is actually. So there are some ways that you know, white can hold this tricky. together. And what's the difference? Ah, and the difference here. Here is actually very subtle. So now I go to c4. I really do threaten right. to go to d3. So it's, a, it's kind of tempo-ish end game, strangely mm -hmm. enough. After king e3, I can play bishop c2, and white is not in time to capture h6 because the ah, b dude will still promote. It's the same thing. I gotta guard two diagonals with my bishop this yeah. time. Yeah. Ah. Always learn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there. I mean. Even with table base, you know, you still got to work all this stuff out. These guys all don't right. have a table base. He's under two minutes. And Vidit is under two minutes. And I claim... He has one winning move. Uh, wait a second. I claim so that's more than 50% uh, for Hans to escape. Now I reduce the probability to 50%. <laughs> It's either he makes, still a draw, think it's makes, it, makes a draw or he doesn't. No, I mean, yeah. I mean th this kind of 50%, sure, I mean, the, yeah, the yeah. well-known meme, I believe. <laughs> yeah, the probability of this is 50%. He either yeah. makes a draw, I mean, two options. <laughs> yes, those are, that's basically it. And we will see, we are eagerly waiting That's to how see. law of probability works. Uh, meanwhile, Gorbian wins against Grigoria Farin, so right. we can confirm that Yu Yang Yi is yeah. the sole leader. Oh my gosh. Well, yes, yeah. by half a point, right? Von Nguyen is sitting uh, at uh, yeah. four and a half points. Yu Yang Yi is at five. We can actually probably take a quick look at the standings here in just a second, uh, just to kind of show what we're talking about. But 
All right, just kidding. We will get the standings here momentarily, but first we're actually going to have an interview with Alex Lenderman, and then we'll come back and have another look at this Hans game and see what's happening there. Enjoy this okay. interview. We'll get you that Alex Lenderman interview whenever we have it. Uh, is there any other games? There was something that you wanted to uh, have a look at. Well, in the B tournament, I'm just checking. Uh, Kadrish Kirilla was a mm -hmm. draw. Yes, right? we saw that one. Mikael Lan against Jacobson was a draw. So one I game. Think, do we look at that one? We can, uh, we can do a real quick really. pass through just yeah, to yeah. completion here. Uh, yeah, just quickly. So Brandon. Oh, yeah, so this is cool. Trying the the four pawns King's attack. Indian. Aha, uh -huh. e6, bishop e2, bishop g4 line, yeah, that's known to be relatively solid for black. Queen to a5, okay, he here is where it gets confusing because, I mean, you can have the same position with inclusion of a6, a4 or not. Uh, b6 is something new to me, to be perfectly honest. Rook e1, king h1, knight c5, and then white just captures, goes e5, looks, yeah, looks looks very promising for white, this one, but it turns out the real advantage was a little bit, uh, a little bit earlier. So, okay, still, something's going on, something's going on, and how did the draw have it? Yeah, bishop, bishop c4 is a sneaky one. Yeah, that's nice, that was uh, cool. Takes, <laughs> b3. All right, so everyone is happy, opposite colored bishops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. not impressed I mean, with all these great moves. Okay, well, so in fact, black was trying, right? Black was yeah. trying, and he offered to draw himself. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that was a, a nice little draw there. I don't know, four pawns attack against yeah, the King's Yeah, four pawns Indian. attack. Uh, in fact, uh, that's the thing with those, like, old-fashioned, very sharp lines. Four pawns attack against mm -hmm. uh, the King's Indian, and also there is one more, four pawns. It's four pawns variation against other kind of defense. Mm -hmm. So people rarely play it, yeah. but when they do, <laughs> it's actually a pain to recall. <laughs> I mean, what was I was supposed to do once again? Yeah. Not, not to lose in 15 moves. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe maybe we'll see more of it in the future. E but, yeah, uh, and over here... What else do we have? Over here, we've gotten to... This position, bishop g4. So only winning move, king c4, was found, it looks king like. King c4 was found, but then there was another only winning move, bishop c2, which wasn't. Oh, wait, what? He didn't play <gasps> it. Hans? Jonathan, he didn't play it. Wait, you're telling me it's a draw? Yeah, it is a draw after bishop g4, king e4. And what? then he goes for this bishop h5 thing, oh but then gosh. Uh, that's exactly what I was doing with no understanding that it's still kind of a border on the way yeah, of this without, king. Yeah, without table base, And it's yeah, incredible. and you can even just play f6, right? And, and you're just waiting so, so that the king cannot oh, enter. Yeah. Is he gonna find this? I mean, it's Hans. Is it might be? Is this easier for Hans to figure out how to defend uh, this than for Black yeah, to break I mean, through? Yeah, he doesn't have that many options to yeah. be perfectly. To be perfectly clear. You just have to be sure not to let the black king get to d3. Yeah. Right? That's the, the only so big thing. Vidit kind of didn't realize. Vidit didn't yeah, I mean, realize. I mean, yeah. he was He, he was doesn't sure. have the table base, so. Yeah, oh. absolutely. No, but, but yeah, that, that was a hard end, end game. Insanely hard. I that mean, even with table base, we're still sitting here, we're figuring it out, and we have all the tools we need. So obviously, uh, very difficult, but this could, mm. Hans could have saved this one. I mean, yeah, this very, to make very, another, very close to make another to draw. Poor Hans. To make another draw. Uh, and while we kind of wait for the conclusion of this one, we'll see if anything else happens. We do have that interview with Alex Lenderman ready to go. I'm here with a very, very happy Alex Lenderman, fresh off his win against Grandmaster Sedwani. Alex, you only need half a point right now to guarantee you clear first. How are you feeling, and how do, how are you feeling after this uh, this victory? Oh, very good, obviously. I mean, I think in my last few games have been you know, pretty good by my standards, so I'm just happy to be playing. I think what I think is to be a good chess and um, really posing my opponent some problems, and um, doing my best every move, every game, staying vigilant, and. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy um, about that. Uh, 
so could you uh, take us through your game real quick and uh, could you tell all the people about uh, everything that happened? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. So let me scroll up. So, um, yeah, I decided this game, I think uh, Raunak probably needed to play for a win because he's one point, point behind. So I, you know, I decided to play something where I have minimal risk, which is why I played knight c3. Okay, I mean, there are some kind of drawish lines, but of course I was not afraid of them because the draw was kind of good for me this game. Um, yeah, he usually plays bishop b4, but against bishop b4, um, you know, that's his main repertoire, but there are many very safe lines against this, and I was going to choose one of them. So he played knight d7, which I've seen him, he's, he's done in the database a few times. Um, and then I prepared this idea, queen c2. It's like a nice flexible move where I, I'm not decided if I want to go bishop f4 or bishop g5. Depends on the situation. Um, actually, what's interesting is that this position is um, my game of last year against Daniel Naroditsky in reverse, up a tempo. Like I had this exact structure with black without, you know, the knight on c3 because I was black. So it's like I'm up a tempo here. So I knew this is should be a good line. And I won that game. I played very well. So I had good memories. And, you know, in general, I thought, uh, you know, Raunik is a very dynamic player. So I was pretty happy with uh, structure like this, you know, Carl's bad structure where I sort of kill the dynamics, you know, especially given that draw is okay. But then, um, you know, I start, I saw that I could, I have this very interesting plan, um, to play this rookie one, um, and, uh, yeah, trying to play maybe a four knight of three ninety five, And I thought this actually poses some problems. Uh, so yeah, then I realized that, okay, we have a fighting position. I actually want to play for a win here, even though draw is okay. It's always important to play principal chess and, uh, um, not play for a draw, not play passively, but play the position. Um, so that's what I was trying to do. Now you played bishop g4, which completely surprised me. Didn't see that move at all. I was expecting something like 96 and stuff, and I was going to play a four knight of three, 95 and... But I guess he's probably relatively fine. But yeah, he played this idea. I was a bit surprised. Um, because I thought I could play a 4 trying to trap his bishop, you know, with g4, f5. But then I realized it's not so simple because I was calculating for a long time here. The move f5. But then he goes queen d6. And uh, the problem is g4 goes queen g3. And he's winning. Uh, so, but the... Uh, yeah, but um, I was planning something like knight b1 and uh, then go g4 at some point. But the problem is he goes something like what I thought knight d7. Okay, maybe knight h7 was better, but I mean, I thought knight somewhere. And the problem is if queen f2, well, he goes f6, I thought. Um, and after g4, he goes queen here, uh, queen here, rook takes e3, and okay... It seemed a bit... I actually saw this bishop c2, but... Uh, I mean, maybe this is why he should go knight h7, actually, because... Oh, it's, it's interesting. He, yeah, I mean, this move? Yeah, queen f2. Oh, knight g5. Yeah, yeah. anyway, I didn't... I thought it's a bit too risky, and I saw this is also an advantage. So, because I entombed his bishop, I realized... Yeah, this is just very good for white. And queen g2, h4, g5... Also have an attack, you know, so um, very unpleasant. Yeah, and then, and then, yeah, I, I'm not sure if I played the best way, but um, I thought it's very common. Here he decided to sack the pawn in order to activate his bishop, which sort of makes sense. But like I always thought this is quite good for me. I mean, I assume I didn't play uh, perfectly, but but you know, I. I think I played well enough, and here, um, yeah, I saw that I spotted this g5 idea, which I think is quite nice. I guess he kind of missed it, he was already in a bit in time pressure because, uh, here I, you know, I get the e5 square, uh, which I think is very unpleasant for him. So, um, so yeah, uh, he played rook d5, but here I thought it's uh, 
very difficult for him. I mean, maybe he has to go queen d6, but it's a very unpleasant endgame down a pawn. And yeah, but uh, he decided to uh, to try to take gold for this pawn. But uh, this, I thought, is uh, is winning. Actually, I missed that he can go bishop e8. I thought I'm winning immediately based on the idea of bishop d5, rook g6, and bishop h5, uh, knight f6, queen f6, queen e queen b8, and then queen g8 mate. But, uh, but yeah, he played bishop e8, and yeah, it was actually took me a very long time to try to calculate this, because I, I just couldn't see how to break through, because um, knight d6, bishop h5, I thought. Queen b8, I thought he plays like rook b3. And uh, he gets this counterplay, rook g3, queen e7. Oh, maybe I'm still winning, but I wasn't, I didn't see exactly how. So eventually I realized that there's some problems with my king. So I've, after spending like almost all my time on move 40, I played this h5 idea, which is probably clean because, again, bishop h5 does not work because of knight f6. And then I want to go king h4 and then knight d6 and I secure the g6 square. Because the point is if I go knight d6 immediately, he goes bishop h5. So I wanted to take that square away. So I was pretty happy with finding this idea. And now, yeah, he, you know, he played, uh, yeah, basically the idea is after rook a3, I go knight d6. Um, so he, yeah, he played c5 and the way the game ended was knight d6, bishop d7, knight uh, rook g6, uh, rook b1, rook takes h6. And now with king g7, it's important, like, go queen g3, takes queen g6, which is quite nice. And if king g8, um, I, it, it, there is one last trap. Don't go queen g4, because here, if I go rook g4, there's suddenly rook h1. Where am I? Maybe I'm still winning, but, okay, maybe not, maybe not. So queen g3 last precision, and here he resigned because after queen g7, I go rook g6, rook h1, king g4, and unfortunately for him, after takes, I could take with the h pawn still. So he's gonna lose the queen, and and he loses the game. So yeah, in general, I was pretty happy about with this game. I mean, obviously, I didn't play it perfectly. It was a complex game, but I think for my standards, I'm I'm quite happy with with the game. Uh, and in general, you know, with my last few games. That's lovely to hear. And uh, tomorrow you're going to be playing uh, Dennis Kodrick with Black. Red How Black. About that? Well, I feel good because uh, there's uh, very little pressure uh, because I'm guaranteed a tie for first. And obviously, I'll just try to play a normal game. Yeah. But I mean, even worse comes to worse. If I were to lose, I feel like I still have a, you know, a white game in the end, end where I can, you know, try to get a draw. But obviously, yeah, tomorrow, you know, just don't think too much about result. Just play a good game, just try to continue what I've been doing, and whatever happens, happens. Um, that's it. Whatever happens, happens. Keep in a level head. That's a very good way to do it. And uh, we hope to see you back in the studio soon. Good luck in your last round. Thank you so much. All right, that was Grandmaster Alex Lenderman in a very comfortable spot, two points ahead, two rounds to go, and a very healthy attitude about it. So uh, this is one where we just might see maybe tomorrow we'll already be able to declare a winner of the B group. Oh, all right, I can yeah. see you have your all of your eyes, all of your attention here on the Hans game. Yeah, well, not much uh, currently goes on in the Hans's game. Mm -hmm. So he, he being Hans, he sure. preferred to keep the pawn on f5, which probably is even more secure because it's you know it's it's a little fence on the way of a uh, uh, black king. It cannot mm -hmm. really yeah. So basically, in order to win, you either need the king here or somehow. Mm -hmm. being able to swing around and get the king to g4, right? And, right. and that both seem to be like really unrealistic. Like with the king on c4, white uh, well sticks to the policy of doing nothing, just mm -hmm. shuffling the bishop here and there. And yeah, and it uh, takes white only, say, one check when you've done all the job and <laughs> went to h6. It's one check and then go back. And one more time, just for anybody that maybe is just joining or whatever, where was the exact moment that black e, went wrong? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> I we have mean, table base, so it'll... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't now, tell us the exact um, moment. Actually, yeah, okay. Where black went wrong, we actually do know. Mm -hmm. The interesting 
thing is that could it be that White was never most, I mean, what he played precisely? Because, right. yeah, it seems that this moment where Black was winning, yeah, it is clear cut, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So once again, King d5, King c4, King e3, and that was the moment to attack the pawn from c2. Not mm. only attacking the pawn, but also covering e4 yes, square. Is, yeah, very and important. White actually needs to decide: does he wants to keep a pawn? Does he want to keep a pawn? Mm. Because you lose the pawn, it's uh, fairly trivial, I believe. Yeah. Or you go here, and then the king gets to d3, and then you can actually do exactly what Vidi did, right? right? It's like stops the pawn with the bishop and so on. Oh boy. Uh, if, right. If we go all the way back, let's go far, far back. We obviously we have plenty of time. I think they're going to play this one out. I'm assuming it's. Yeah. I mean, it's very unlikely that it won't be a draw now, but maybe this game will go on forever. Who knows? Um, all the way to the moment where Hans even allowed this like double. He was down two pawns at like some moment. Uh, right. So well, the moment where we he... could go all the oh, way, yeah, yeah, all yeah, the yeah. way back here, because it's also in a when way. He the rooks. Yes, also that's exactly. here, in a way, it's a very interesting kind of point, right? After bishop e4, you do have other moves. Yes, you could try he... rook d7, for instance. Right. If black takes your pawn, you take black's pawn. So you keep, the, you keep the rooks on the board. And usually, kind of consensus between the chess players is that if you are not sure that you're holding right. with the bishop, you keep the rooks. Right. Okay. Very true. Well, technically, it adds more possibilities for the kind of strongest side. But, I mean, if... Right. Yeah, like also maybe one day this rook but generates even in hindsight, I feel contemplate like this, everything. This puts so much pressure right. on Hans. He had no doubt whatsoever. He just went rook, eight, uh, rook d8. Yeah. Black played b5, which as we figured out mm -hmm. was Black's only shot at mm -hmm. playing for a win. So b5 was actually very clever. Now White is limited to only moves because yeah, this. Then you somehow have to stop this pawn. So once again, right, bishop a5 or e7, I don't think it's, it's uh, all that much different. So this one we are getting by fours. Mm -hmm. h5. And here the engine is still kind of indecisive. So g3, bishop c2. So it was, uh, look, after h5, it's 0, 9. I'm, I'm talking about my engine here, sure. this computer, which is not very deep. Once again, people at home yeah, probably anal analyze it much better. Much. But uh, I just want to illustrate how confused the engine is. Mm -hmm. Because this moment, it says h5. After h5, the evaluation is minus 0 0.9. So black's okay. up a pawn. Small it's a advantage for black. Yeah. Uh, it suggests king g3. We okay. play king g3, and the engine says, OK, I changed my <laughs> mind. It's <laughs> minus 3.5. <laughs> How yeah. do you how do you actually what do you make out of it? Yeah. So I mean, that Bishop is just C2. a very important lesson for people analyzing games with you know engines that there are these kinds of positions where there's going to be these swings and you kind of have to know how to use an engine a lot more in order to understand like what's actually going on because sometimes you know, the computer's not going to tell you. The yeah. Well, especially like closer to the end of the game with all mm -hmm. those end games, like computer might be claiming, hey. This side's winning, right. and it's a huge plus, but it's only because in some, I don't know, 15 moves long line, you have this mm -hmm. only study-like move, which wins, and all the rest will be a dead draw. Like, yep. For instance, here, Vidit found the right plan. He found a sequence of maybe five, six only moves, and then one move in the wrong direction, yeah. and it's gone. Absolutely. And that's kind of what happened. It was a, it was a situation where, as soon as Vidit maybe had a win, uh, your table base, <laughs> Maybe not miraculous win, but very difficult win to find. Uh, I, I guess it did go wrong for him. Yep. And then, I mean, this was all brilliant too by Vidit, the, bringing the king this way first and then running back around the other way. Mm hmm. So here he's not. Uh huh. Bishop e two. He was saying minus five, so like black is winning, and then black is no longer winning. <laughs> yeah. Nice. The position of the king g3, bishop c2, <laughs> uh, stockfish isn't sure at depth <laughs> around yeah, 100. So people are on depth 100 at home. I mean, it, I mean if you can't figure it out. Deep, knowing 100 <laughs> is no joke. 50 yeah. full I mean, moves. That, that's crazy. For both that's sides. Crazy. But that, yeah, basically this, uh, this kind of, you have to understand that asking even from 
such a good players mm -hmm. uh, to play this uh, end game with oh, man, utmost precision, it's, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> unrealistic. It's unrealistic. So yeah, so far so good. Uh, bishop a3. Was this a mistake? Now that I'm thinking, could it be that like bishop b2? Uh, still, still the king goes, yeah. So yeah. It, it's probably not that different from h5. Yeah, and here clearly black was, yeah, black here was actually, according to machine, uh, bishop d1 was not needed. You do not really need to force this pawn. So mm. maybe it was easier to say go king b5 first and then king c4. You probably end up in this kind of same same similar. position. Yeah. But anyway. So you went here and this is where we enter table based territory. King okay. d5 is still fine. Bishop takes king to c4. That's a win. Okay. King e3. Mm, and the only winning move was bishop c2. Yeah. Bishop c2 attacking the pawn right away, but the big idea is that the king kind of, the white king is going to need to move at some point. Yeah. The black king gets in. It's a win for black. Yeah, and we could also kind of highlight, uh, let's say, white pretends he does exactly the same as in the game sure. but yeah but with but no without a pawn with, without a, an f pawn but yeah but then this pawn starts moving and it Absolutely. gets to h3 and it will have to stop it right mm -hmm. uh let me just That's, i don't know yeah, yeah bishop moves h5 here h4 and at some point you actually have to run after this pawn mm -hmm. and black goes and takes the bishop and you don't have the pawn to distract black mm -hmm. right and luckily for black the, the, remaining, yeah, the remaining the remaining rook the corner. pawn the remaining rook pawn and the bishop yeah, so of the important. If it was a right dark color, square yeah. that you were trying to promote on white would have a draw uh, the bishop of the right color mm -hmm. so. so here we are King to f4, and it's been here for quite a while. Last capture was move 63. Now we are at move 87. No, it's not. It's not only about capture. The pawn moves as well. Okay, we did. Of course, we played for a bajillion more moves. Perfect. Looking for ways to. So you're saying plenty of time to go get some popcorn. Come back uh, and just yeah. sit around. So let's just let's just quickly check what the B tournament, what sure. happens in the B tournament. Yeah, I think we can do it. Because we still had one well, it game. less than a minute. I was just one, worth pointing out we had less than a minute for a minute. Uh, one game going. That's still black. All right. Uh, night up. Harutinian with black. Night up for the pawn. But yeah, but somehow still struggles. Mm -hmm. Still struggles. This guy, how long do they have? Just, just out of other curiosities. So this material, we we actually have had for quite some yeah, that's time. Yeah, <laughs> this is almost so exactly where there we was on move forty. So when they, when they passed the time control, mm -hmm. black was up a night, and somehow I don't know if he played like the most precise moves, but right. yeah, let's leave it aside for now. Um, yeah, you'd expect this one to be maybe, it's, if not easily, but relatively easily winning. And he struggles. He clearly struggles. Okay, mm -hmm. he tried to try to kind of go in with the king. It didn't work. Then yeah, it's a move sixty-two. We are talking mm -hmm. about. We are nowhere near this um, fifty, 50 move moves off. rule because also the pawn was moved and so on. Yeah. But yeah, but it's not not obvious how black is going to make progress. Oh boy. Yeah, so All knight right. g5, I, I reckon rook f8, yeah? Rook f8, and then the pawn is guarded, and yeah, one way of winning this would be would be to try to force the rooks straight. Ah, no, but you, you, you can't really. No, I thought, like, get the rook to the f file, mm -hmm. but then white will be guarding this pawn from a3. <laughs> <laughs> no matter which way you so go, so I'm going to guard yeah, from the opposite yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th yeah. That, that's, that's not... Uh, not Could that easy. Not huh. that easy at all. But you still are. Are you are you confident that Black is winning this, or is it not obvious? No, no, at not all? at all. Not at all. Uh, for what I know, like winning with the bishop sometimes is even is it easier. E no, yeah, it's it, it, it's easier. 
um, most of the cases, but even with the bishop sometimes, yeah. bishop versus this pawn, like you have h, g, and the bishop, and yeah. opponent has f, g, h, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we so both have rooks. It might be not, not oh. trivial. It might be not yeah. trivial. These are always hard. Yeah, so that's what we have. Okay. We went knight g5, rook uh, f8. Sure. Now, <laughs> all right, so maybe, maybe <laughs> try to get the kind yeah. of swing the king all the way to e2. you attack with the third two. piece, then you... Yeah, then you win. Uh, that, that, that's how you prove you actually have an extra piece, right? Uh, knight to, uh, sorry, king to e7 was a suggestion, but then, yeah, but then he goes back to f5. It's once mm -hmm. again... It's really hard to kind of get rid of this stupid rook. Yep. So yeah, it feels like somehow the king would need to be attacking the f pawn. He's but he's trying it. Hey, yeah, there you go, he chat. sort of tries something. King e6, okay, e rook goes. Rook goes. Ah, maybe swing the knight to d4. Ah, okay, so let's say if white patiently waiting then this is the position okay, that you want to get. Up. And this one is winning uh -oh. because rook f4, knight e2 check. Yes, okay, that's a, okay. That's a clever at resource. Least, yeah, at least we kind of get something to work with. Yeah, it could be. Okay. Okay, so that's one that setup. That's a chance idea. Very good job. That's one setup, yeah. But obviously white can try to, yeah, try to, to do something about this. Uh, okay, back to Hans. Right. Back to Hans. Um, Anything happening? King is very active on g5, but since the pawn, since the pawn, black pawn that is, passed this diagonal, there is no chance of winning whatsoever because you wait with the bishop mm -hmm. and you wait, like literally, you go bishop a1, b2, a1, b2. This looks like a much clearer way for uh, white to hold this. And now. yeah, I mean, you don't actually have to react to anything when the king is on c2, mm -hmm. right? And you can even still wait. You, you can wait for black to push b2, take yep. it, mm -hmm. and only then go f7. Yeah, which is sensible. So enough. basically, when, yeah, the point Which is like show. when the king is far enough, you go f7. Yeah, that's what he, he does. does it now. Okay. Yeah, king is far enough after king e4, says Hans Niemann. So whenever king e4 was played, f7, bishop f7, king h3, it will be seven in a row. Seven draws, seven draws in, in a, a row, row for Hans Niemann. Can he go two solid. more? Solid. <laughs> solid. I don't, would you call this one solid? Uh, I don't, this one maybe was, was, that was a bit lousy. fortunate. That was a bit lousy, to be honest. But yeah, the, uh, draw is a draw. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, seven draws in a row. Uh, yeah, black is a piece up. Move 103. All right. And the round finally and draw for the A tournament concludes. Move, draw, Hans, in a way, very lucky to get it. And with that, we're going to be wrapping up our coverage of today by looking at these standings now in the A group. Let's see how things have shaken up. Yu Yang Yi is the sole leader. Both groups with a sole leader. This one only by half a point because Von Nguyen also won today and is sitting at four and a half points. Right under that, still with a shot, is Vidit and Gregory Oparin. They both have four points. Hans Niemann now. Uh, a perfect three and a half out of seven. Perfect score. Uh, perfect, perfect draws. Consistent score of three and a half. Yeah. So does Ilya Nizhnik and Nijat Absov, uh, as well as Aram Hakobian. And then there's Nicholas Theodoro and Surya Ganguly at the bottom of the pairings. Miro, what is going on in Group B? Uh, what's going on in Group B? Well, it's we still different. have one game pending, but that's in a kind of a lower, mm -hmm. uh, lower part of the cross table. So it's a huge tie for the second. We don't know who's going to be the second in this tournament. Correct. It's 99% sure we know who is the who is the winner. Alex Lenderman had absolutely stunning performance in last rounds. So six out of seven. Absolutely. I wish I could score something like that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. And then Ramak Sadwani, Christopher Yu, well, leaders a couple of days ago, yes, yeah. kept losing and they are caught by Gergely Kantor and Dennis Kadri. Is so right. that's it. So Only one so player. So you guys will need to wait until tomorrow to see if we have an official winner of the B group. We will know potentially tomorrow. Uh, and other than that, it's been an excellent show, a longer yeah, show yeah, than usual. Yeah, a longer show, but, but uh, well, an exciting one. And uh, I'm so glad. Thank you to everybody that has been watching. We will join you tomorrow for round eight. <laughs>
This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Any reproduction or distribution of this content without the express written consent of the St. Louis Chess Club is prohibited.